All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We have Viking Jarl, Tex, and Raven with us. This lovely evening's events. We are going to have the final of the prologues. Ains, yeah. next session is going to be episode one, where everyone is fully leveled and fully vetted as a warrior who can actually do something. It will be fun. Any opening remarks from you all? What do you all have going on scheduled so everyone watching can know what thoughts and plans you have? Well, myself, I am uh, I am still working on my 365 challenge. It's getting closer to the wedding, so I'm starting to do a bunch of other not necessarily streaming or not i'm sorry not necessarily gaming things but i'm still trying to figure out different ways to do streaming and whatnot um i have specific cups that i have that i am offering to my community to raise a glass with us on our on the wedding day which is going to be pretty cool um but other than that i'm, I'm just just doing the wicked thing wicked thing indeed Jarl? The way? Jarl, you're muted. Yeah, I think you stepped away. For okay, a go for it, Raven. Um, right now, I started a bi-weekly uh, group stream with Monday Napper and uh, Pudding Pop Panda. Uh, we play community games uh, sometimes just three of us sometimes uh, other people as well and in a few weeks on the 20th I will be running a mecha hack one shot uh, I'm Nix is in it uh, and so are a few other streamers including uh, Table Knights uh, Big Boss Senpei Big Tex, I think you're still in it. We'll have to talk. And also uh, Tool McBag. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait for that. And that's, uh, that's all I have on the horizon right now. Excellent. Tex, what do you got going on? <laughs> it's my birthday. It's your what? Happy birthday! Oh, your birthday, birthday. yes. Yes, yes. It's happy your birthday. birthday. And a happy birthday to you. Anything else going on with you? Nope. Alright. Jarl, are you back? Yes, Tex? Yes. I'm not towing tonight. I got my coffee. Yay. What do you have going on in the Jarl world? Oh, well, tomorrow we have uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Huh? And, What's that? Uh, How do you I don't know that? what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing on Thursday. I didn't plan that far ahead. I'll figure it out. Well, that works. Be sure to follow all these fine gentlemen in there lovely endeavors as they are very entertaining and wonderful to hang out with all right so without further ado mute do you want to take it off with a reminder of where things have brought us to thus far i forgot the mute recap. No, I was pressing my spacebar on the wrong uh, keyboard, and that, uh, as I have now found out, is rather ineffective. Um, in order to make things work, you have to use the proper keyboard. Um, not game-related, but IRL-related. Good luck, people. So last time we were here, I was uh, a bit older than the time before, and a bit younger than the time now. We are becoming more of a group and a team. Uh, the good friend Jotnor and um, Hroff 
we have we've been staying at the homestead doing the things that that we do we've been training Jotnor has been working in as a blacksmith assistant and Raven has been learning the things that he needs to learn to become the intellectual one however our friend um, Bjorden and and I struggle with his name consistently um, because I am a forgetful little mute um, Bjork there we go our friend Bjork has revisited the homestead we have um, discovered that there was the passing of his father who was a great boat builder and uh, Bjork was looking to build something in his memory in his honor uh, however shortly after Bjork arrived there was a meeting called within the town and the young ones were to be sent to training to a specific training held by Odin's own in order to determine whether we will be a warrior or a scholar. We made ourselves ready that night and Bjork attempted to put his, I guess you could say, woo upon the handmaiden of the, of the town master's daughter, but uh, didn't, didn't turn out too well for him. It was amusing to watch but I'm sure very painful to participate in. Um, after that, we determined that all, or we learned that all lads of the age were going, and we were going back to the mainland, back to the main area, the Jarl's town to train. So we arrived at the town, and as we were eating, having food some ravens flew throughout the throughout the hall and landed on Hroth and others these others were taken away and they were unsure where they were going as we were all told that we were here to learn how to be warriors but then instantly people are taken away these individuals are being used for their intellect rather than their physical skill and Prof was learning new things languages understandings meanwhile Jotnor caused quite a scene in the main hall we were told we were to be tested and a fight ensued Jotnor was attacked by three individuals right away could have been four but the way he fought it could have been 20 and he'd have taken care of all of them the young ones attacked Jotnor and he brushed it off like a mosquito when he was done Bjork and I made our way through several different groups of, of individuals with Jotnor and then we decided to let Jotnor decide where to go next. And Jotnor, spying the Jarls, charged at him. Not to leave our brother in a fight, Bjork and I also charged towards the Jarls. The Jarls took Jotnor down with a quick trip. <laughs> Bjork was thrush, thrush, goodness, thrusting towards one of the other Jarls who quickly disarmed him and stood on his spear. Meanwhile, I came to make a connection with the left side and, and did not go so well. We were all pretty quickly beaten. When the Jarl was asking us to yield because Jotnor started the fight, we looked to Jotnor, who instead of looking like he was ready to get up and continue uh, was very happily just snacking so his stomach led him to battle rather than the desire to fight the Jarls so slightly ashamed we lowered our heads and explained our dues uh, Bjork did I sat silently the Jarls however did not 
treat us negatively because of this. They saw the signs of good warriors. They saw the signs of the brotherhood and the band. And then they saw the idea of attacking not minor peers that we have, but their own class way above our level. But the ability to do so, and at least the balls to do so, they were impressed. So we've been chosen to become warriors. Prof has been chosen to become a scholar. So we trained for the next few years. That is what our life has been. Indeed. So you were at the Circle of Odin, little shrine area, not the main town, just to clarify. And indeed, he did attack the Jarls, Housecarls, the best warriors of the island, and survived. One of the wisest of the group, or the one who is known as the wisest, actually said that he, basically, you've been informed, is going to take you as his tut tutelage, and he will instruct you in the ways of war. So now that that was done, you find yourselves in the main town that you've been training for a few years. A few points of information that needs to be dealt with is that Bjork, when you return to the main town, you are stopped by an individual who you know. This individual informs you that he is aware of your father's demise and wishes to provide you with a home while you continue your training, and while training is not going on, allow you to travel with him throughout the island. What does Bjork respond to this? Um, I'd like to make an insight check. Sure. If you'd like to know, the individual's name is Bragi. He is the prime merchant of the town who actually does the traveling oh. between all of them. I've already talked to this gentleman, too, when I was younger with my, uh, mm -hmm. my father, haven't I? Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's not up to no shenanigans. No, his, his wife is well known in the main town as having one of the yes, nicest shops. <laughs> because... Oh, <shit>. because, <laughs> because she... Um, actually runs the shop that he actually brings all the goods back to. Now, here's my question. As a person who still feels more comfortable living outdoors, um, actually, you know what? Let's roleplay this. In the winter? I... Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't... Viking houses weren't exactly the most insulated. You might as well be outside. <laughs> Um, he clears his throat. <clears throat> well, I, I would appreciate it. I was going to stay at the Jarl's place with the other Vagabonds for the winter. Um, I feel more comfortable on a boat or outdoors. But, uh, I will humbly accept Graf. I understand that you feel some homage to my father, and I will not disrespect that. You've always been a good lad to your father, boy. I want to make sure you're taken care of, and I know sometime the Jarl's home is actually not available. And so I feared you a should Jarl's have a place to stay. Available in the... He kind of uh, takes a step back, and he's like, in the winter, the Jarl doesn't make his home available? The Jarl's home is sometimes filled with uh, guests preparing for raids in early oh, spring. Oh, I understand. I um, understand. And so sometimes it's not available for other people because he has other guests. For the guests. peasants. It's okay. You can yes. say the peasants. Yes. Thank you. The dregs. Get in, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the riffraff. Yes. I, uh, I motion to the small little wreck sack I have. Well, I have all my belongings with me. And, um, I think the next thing that he might notice is that, uh, my fishing spear is broken in two. Like... It got mm -hmm. pretty damaged in the fight. It was a primitive, handmade, three-pronged fishing spear, but He's it's like, got a little blood on the tip, and, and it's right. been just absolutely destroyed. 
I believe you may need a better tool than that for your training. Uh, it was my understanding that they would provide a sword or an axe. They may, but I believe you um, might prefer a different tool, am I correct? I liked my spear. Come with me. Gunvor has um, just what you need. Gunvor is, he is his wife. with his wife now? No, he, he's or, by himself. Okay, so he's saying, come with me to his wife. She has something at her shop that will be just what be good for you. Okay. So I start following him to the shop, and you guys are going to find a really hilarious character quirk that I rolled for this gentleman <laughs> uh, when I arrive. <laughs> so I obediently follow, uh, but I, do, I try not to look too excited. And in a in a little bit, I feel kind of ashamed because I feel like he's taking me in because he feels I don't have what it takes to survive. You get there, and Gunvar is actually one that he helped your father out with some things like food and, you know, preparations when he was busy and you were um, young and your mother wasn't Oh, around. he made me sandwiches. Yes, she did. She did. Aggie's wife. Oh, she, okay. Gunvar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gunvar. Grun um, Gunvar's the wife. All right, let yes. me write this down. This G U N V O R, that is the wife. And the guy is B A G G I. Okay, so B A G G I, and spell the wife's name one more time. G U N V O R. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very. Uh -huh. I have met these people. Before. So he okay. opens the door and lets you in, and you see her, and she's like, "Ah, oh, welcome, Bjork. Welcome back. How are you doing?" I'm doing well, uh, Maiden. She, she, she's, he, he's referring to her as Maiden in complete respect. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, I see a problem. That must be why dear Baggy here brought you here. In just a second. She goes to some boxes and brings out a tall quarterstaff. It's um, basically like the haft of a spear, even though it doesn't have a tip. It is a nice, long hard walking stick now, is, um is it is oh it the God, same size as a normal is it the same size as a normal quarter staff or is this one of the the longer ones for like pushing boats out of dock and stuff yeah, like that it's it's like it looks like it was supposed to be intended for that it's not been finished um okay. so it's a little longer it's like seven six feet tall yeah so got you it, know got it, got it. a long spear without a tip uh, basically, I'm. Is it cool if I put down quarterstaff with reach? Mm hmm. Cool. I'll just add that to my character sheet. And I do want to get an editable character sheet, so I'm still working on trying to find that. Oh, uh, bro. I've got all the edibles right here, my dude. I've got some mushies, <laughs> some, some flour. What are you looking for? Editable. A document oh. that can be edited. I you. have edibles. I'm eating a salad right now. That's what mm. I do. And so you now have a staff that you can use. Um, Jotnar probably has a nice large uh, yeah, he does. <laughs> chunk of tree branch that he calls his club. <laughs> you got you a tree branch, don't you, boy? That's right. Oh. Jotnar, that's some uh, impressive wood you've got. <laughs> and, and I bet you know just how to use it. Um, so what I, what I think I'm going to do is take the quarter staff. I don't want to test it out in the house, but I do have a question. She runs a shop, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. My next question is, how clean is the shop? Clean. It's one of the nicest shops in town. Like, are we talking perfectionist clean, or are we talking it'll pass? Just shy of perfectionist. Okay, I um, go to the one item that's throwing everything off and just shift it a little bit so that everything is in order. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. Good eye. I don't see how people come in here and pick up your goods and don't put them back where they belong. <laughs> they all do that. Unfortunate. 
Most don't have an eye. Help you with? Well, if you're not traveling with Baggy later and you're in town and don't have time, you could always come help with the shop. I'd very much appreciate that. Of course. You also catch the waft of, like, a really delicious stew and, like, some bread in the back. And, of course, you know, you're uh, foraging for food. You've uh, maintained sustenance, but having a finely, you know, created meal has been uh, rare. My mouth starts to salivate. Yeah, at first, I was just rattling off because I talk a lot. And then as I'm smelling the food, you can tell I'm getting distracted, stumbling on my words. Are you hungry? <laughs> I don't want to impose. Oh, it's no imposing. You're our boy now. We're glad to <laughs> take care of you. When she says you're our boy now, he just no, has a You're our boy, not a boy. You're basically yeah, yeah. No, that's our what I'm son. Saying. Yeah, when she says you're our boy now he has a flash of his father's face and swallows a, a lump in his throat he's like thank thank you um, if there's any chores you need done let me know Certainly. and he knows in viking culture you don't turn away a gift so he just mm -hmm. accepts whatever they give him she goes back and gets a nice large bowl of like really good venison stew and nice chunk of bread and he's like there you go You'll need your strength for your training. Many thanks. Um, the table that she uses to sell her stuff, I imagine it's kind of like a counter. Mm -hmm. Just a few of them, um, but yeah. Is it pretty plain? It's not extravagant. It's more meant for function and durability and to last. If there's ever any spare time and we do any more time jumps, I don't know if that's in the works. But, oh yeah, um, it is. I I would like to carve, spend some time carving her the uh, sagas, the Norwegian sagas, starting with, uh, holy crap, why am I not remembering his name? <laughs> Eric the Red. Oh, terrible. No, not Eric the Red, the mythical, starts with a B, what the heck is his name? Baldur? I made a movie about it. No, <laughs> I'll figure it out. Beowulf, thank you. Beowulf. Starting with Beowulf and some of the other sagas about great uh, Vikings like that. And I'd love to carve uh, right under the lip of the counter just the story from the f the last Ragnarok and all the way up to current events. Okay. Why don't you roll a... See, I might need to see Fraff to draw the designs because he knows more about that stuff than I do. Yeah. For, for the quality of carving, let's have you roll a carpenter's check. Ooh, thank you. You get a bonus. I do. That's a plus four to my roll. Basically, the higher you get, the better craft it is. So 18. 18. That is fairly good. Sexy. Sexy that is, table. Yeah, it is very finely crafted. Um, this will come into play, you know, later on, but you, you will be able to definitely make a fine craft. So, the rest of you are at the Jarl's ground for training. Um, you did see Bjork go off with this individual, which, um, Raff and the Mute, uh, Raff would know, I'm not sure if the Mute would, probably. Uh, the Mute and, um, Jotnar would have seen him before. But, Haraf, you've actually had dealings with him. This is the merchant who travels to the homestead and actually brings and sells and buys the goods. Yes, so I was going to be dealing with him probably a little more formally, but I got chosen for this thing, so yeah. I to end up pursuing that path. Yeah, you, your quarters are... Secondary quarters. So sometimes you can stay at the Earl's place when you guys are training, but when that area is not available, you have to have another place to stay. And so either you go back to your homestead, or you can actually stay at the temple here in town. Raf? And yep. Jotnar and Mute have been offered a place to stay with the person who's teaching you, as he's decided to, you know, allow that to happen. Um, So, your teacher, I'll go ahead and throw it here in chat so you guys can copy it down if needed. 
That is the name of your mentor, your teacher in the arts of war. So, you all are training against others. Is there anything that you guys want to do during your training or anything you want to highlight? Where did you put it at? Uh, put it in the in-game chat. I can put it in the other one as well for you. Oh, no, that makes sense now that I know where it is. I was looking for it in Discord and on your screen. I, I no, no, that's it. fine. I'll put it there as well. I still ain't found it. Let's see. It must be down here. Yeah, it is. There you go. Put it in Ricardo. both. Ricardo! Ricardo! Wiki Ricardo! It's not Italian, huh? No. Norse. Guido. <coughs> and so you guys begin your training in earnest. Um, definitely uh, have the ire of some of the others to your uh, successes. But also have proven your worth. If there's anything particular you guys want to do or say, just let me know. Otherwise, we'll just keep on going. Well, so I've undergone some training already. A little bit, yeah. Cookies. Uh, yeah, so, cookies. Oh, yeah. So it's uh, only only a little bit that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. I haven't done. Uh, and it's not continuous. It's like I train for a little bit. You are being trained with the combatant some, and then you're being trained in the temple that is there in oh, the town, okay. under the tutelage of the um, Gaudi of Odin, who chose you. He's actually came to the town, which is rare, and is instructing you and the others who passed. I guess uh, probably the weapons I'd focus on mostly on a on a bow, short bow or dagger. I guess not really. I seem to have very. I am very bad at using any other melee weapons. Mm -hmm. And you're basically you're, you're being taught like the art of healing and stuff. So a skill you might want to make sure you take is probably uh, medicine or nature, or something like that, to involve the herbs of nature and the things used for healing and helping mend the wounds. Um, so but you, you're I'll also being taught... Hmm? I'll take uh, religion and medicine at first level. Sure. You're also being taught exactly that. Religious things, scholarly things, the history, uh, threats, um, different things about lore and legend that have transpired in the area. And despite what the mute thinks, I'm actually not the smartest in the group. I'm, uh... No, the mute actually, actually thinks that would be himself. Well, actually, the thing is, uh... Bjork is actually second smartest, and third is, uh, Jotnar and Raph. <laughs> Yeah. Surprisingly, he's, <laughs> Raph uh, makes it appear he's uh, smart, but he's actually just very charismatic. <laughs> he's good at faking it. Exactly, yes. He's good at faking it. I know some people that were good at faking it. politicking. <laughs> the Mutes class actually uses intelligence for its DC on its maneuvers. Um, which I did forget to get that. I just saw I forgot to put that on you, the maneuvers on your sheet, Viking. So I'll have to get that updated. Sorry about that. This past weekend was crazy and didn't get anything done that I needed to. Fear not, I'll forgive you because I wouldn't know how to read it anyways. <laughs> so, Remind your years of training. time for green hell last night. Hey, I tried, man. I tried. <laughs> As time goes on, Bjork travels the island. Graf does training. He actually is brought up the mountain to where the Godi of Odin resides and oversees things. If you look on the eastern side of the island, you'll see a mountain that actually has a path going up. 
They didn't have a raven icon, but they had an eagle one, so I used the eagle, but it's supposed to be a raven. And We're over here? Uh, uh, east. <laughs> that's west side, that's a river. Oh, oh sorry. Right, right there. there. It's like a cone. Yeah, right past Gandalf here. <laughs> Uh, that's probably old in there. Yes, that is the guy who chose you for training. And then, for those of you guys who are new to Tabletop Simulator, all you have to do is move your finger over the map and press Alt, and it'll bring up a really big view of it. Yes. And so that is the land as portrayed. However, Yorick. In your travels, you find that this map that has been presented is actually not correct. Your travels with your adopted father has shown you that there's many errors in this map, that it's more of an artist's rendition and a general placement than it is a factual map. And so... Through your years of work and practice, you have started working on building your own map. If I'm correct, we talked about that. Yeah, I was going to like draw it on the back of a rabbit for a deer for depending on how big it is. It actually and looks I... like. So. Can't flip uh, it anymore. I was going to flip the map. Me there. <gasps> oh, they're changing it. That's why. Sorry about that. It's uh, glitching on me here, not letting me do what I needed. <laughs> Bjork decided to make his own map because he didn't like the artist rendition. So Bjork, how do you feel about your map? Oh, it is the accurate map. Makes me feel less anxious. You'll notice a few discrepancies between the two, I'm sure. Especially the lake in the uh, middle. Mm -hmm. It's a larger, closer to where the, the Jarl is. Actually, it's even closer to our town, our little place. Is it, let's say, Oscar? So mm -hmm. That's where we're from? Yeah. He can... Which, those are the names of the person who owns the town, or owns this homestead. So, the main town yeah, there is technically uh, Gettifold, which is the name of the whole map, but that's also the name the island holds, is the name of the main town. The name above that main town is the current Jarl of this land. But this is the map that your dear friend has produced on the island during your training. The mute, your axe skills have been improving, and Jotnar's um, been told that he has to use a different weapon now because he's damaged too many training dummies. So he's been required to now use... Um... A sack filled with wool. And he still seems to knock over the dummies for some reason. The training dummies. I'm surprised they don't have him build one as part of his training. Yeah, he's probably built quite a few, fight. but he still wrecks them. <laughs> I will kick your ass in a pillow fight now. I have experience. <laughs> uh, I meant like a full size for him. <laughs> training dummy. I'll yeah. Make it it probably may have to be made out of rock and old growth tree or something. Probably just, yeah, solid rock, but then he still bashes the rock to bits. <laughs> yeah. Right, you, get a nerf, you get a nerf sword, and that's what you have to use. Basically. That's a good way of putting it. That, that's essentially what they've done to Jotnar to... Um, Limit the amount of damage done to the grounds and to the other things. 
And as your training continues, and you show much promise. However, you've started to notice there is some conflict amongst the house carls. One of the years, one of them brings home a lady as a prize, essentially, in his mind, and your mentor decides that that is not okay and speaks out against it. And is then challenged to a duel that you all get to now witness. Keep in mind, your mentor is the older member of the group. And this individual taking him on is one of the younger. And not proven to be one of the wiser of the group. The duel begins, and eventually you get to watch your mentor get slain by this individual who's never been nice to you guys at all. In fact, he tends to um, encourage his pupils to be bullies and impolite and not nice to you all within the realm of um, what's permitted, and often pushing the bounds, griefing you all and making your lives miserable whenever possible. <clears throat> now that your mentor is slain, you have to determine who is going to train you. That is something that is now up for debate. You get to now look down at the body of your mentor who has been teaching you now for probably four on, going on four years has taught you many things and groomed you to be good warriors and taught you how to be honorable combatants serving Odin to the best of your abilities, teaching about all of the pantheon, who they are and what they seek in their servants. We'll let you all now speak to how you're feeling seeing this unfold before you. I'm ready to hurt somebody. Now Jotnar. It was a it was a fight. He went out with glory. That is the way. As you're saying this, Bjork, I need you and Hraf at least to make perception check. Dragon, welcome, sir. Wow, well, I wasn't paying attention. Um, I rolled a twenty-one. Yeah. On a twelve, let it die. Would you get Raven? Uh, a lowly eleven. Okay. Wow. So you, you think you see something, Raven or Haraf, but you're not sure. Haraf is like. Sees something he thinks above your mentor. Jarl. Bjorik. Sees the image of his mother, who had passed, coming down and taking the body in a image, essentially, of the body up with her. She has wings now. Uh, he just smiles lovingly at it for both of them. I was a little distracted. I was uh, saying a prayer probably when I... And right. Anyone who's uh, listening, I s s stumble over the words for a second, but I get back, like, I was distracted for a second, and then I back to singing. Yeah. Bjork, do the mute or Jotnar see anything change on your face or your countenance? Um, if it is, all right, you go. Well, for me, it was just a, like a split second. Like I think I saw something, so I stumbled a bit, but then I regained my composure. So it was just very brief for me. Right. Yeah. 
looking for Bjork? Uh, like I said, just a smile. Okay. You don't know, you're, you're just, um, talking about your mentor's demise and someone needs to fight, and you see, you heard what Bjork said to you. Now, Jotnar, it's, it was a fight, and you see him now smiling. Mute, what are you doing with all of this? Uh, not much. Really kind of unfazed. Just waiting for the next thing to happen. Just kind of there. So okay. I guess this is our cue that it's time to move. Well, you gotta figure something out. Um... We're not exactly welcome here anymore, are we? You're not sure. As far as you know, you now no longer have a teacher to train you in the ways of the war of war and you know ensure that you finish your training to become a warrior of the island, the clan. You don't know what the future holds. <coughs> so a little relieved because he didn't like the uh, weapon training uh, that much. Yeah, you may not have, but this is the one of this is the house Carl who's been the nicest to you, your your friends. Oh no, no, he's uh, he mourns the loss, but he knows yeah, it was yeah. uh, honorable uh, combat, at least yeah. from his side and <laughs> if no one else takes him on he's okay with that it's, uh, it's just with the combat part <laughs> <laughs> right so the person who killed him is uh his name is Vigo um is it better to put it in the game chat or do you guys prefer me put it in discord chat oh it doesn't matter I think Discord would be better because then it's more permanent than. Okay. Now, the person over all the house carls, who's kind of like the right hand of the Arl, is Amund. A M U N D. And he comes up and says, Condolences on your losses. I've spoken with Gamar, and he will be training you all in is stead and nodding to your teacher and so to you at to least Vigo, right hmm? he's nodding to Vigo yes uh, no he's nodding to Guskard as he's fallen oh, okay. he's saying since Guskard has fallen this other guy will now teach you so who, who will be teaching us I didn't like I hear that I got background noise here. So. Mm -hmm. I just put it in chat for you for the. Um, okay. And so, you did know that Shelmar here was actually um, close to Guskar, and they both seem to disagree with um, the choice that Vigo is making. There. So you know that at least um, two of the house carls were not um, agreeing with what he was doing. I mean, he's definitely not the um, most favored sort, but he still is a good warrior and so has some entitlement accordingly. Your years of training go on, and all the house carls and greatest warriors of the town are called away, and you are all left here once again. As they leave, Amon calls all the trainees together. Well, we are gone. You have one mission remaining to prove that you are worthy warriors of our tribe, clan, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying, I don't remember the exact term that they would have used. Yes. 
you know, I'm human. Um, you all shall find feats of glory to be had while we are gone. Those who succeed upon our return will be given the honor of being called warriors. So, farewell, and may Odin guide you all. And they all board their ship and head off. And that is actually perfect time for us to take a quick break, let you all grab uh, some more cookies for you, Tex, and maybe some milk. Um, grab a drink if you need to, get everything set, and we will press on in just a moment. And uh, I just got to get a few things set up here. All right? All right. Hi, Capitan. Hello? We have craving, but like the way you used to make it. Did we all pick uh, favorable gods? I picked Odin, so sure. Don't change it up. I almost don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> I don't know what she used to do, but it was good. quick point of order that I need to make sure I mention to you all. Um, leveling is going to be done based on loot acquisition, not based on defeated foes. So there is treasure values that you will acquire that equal the standard XP gain that you would get in D&D, but artifacts, relics, items like that are what you will be using you gain that experience. Does that make sense to everyone? Anyone have questions? So it's what we find, not what we do? Yes. It's more what you do that matters. Therefore... But you said it's more what we find that matters. Well, it's what you do, meaning what you acquire, but not what you kill. Killing is so one way to acquire. Not necessarily the best, wisest, or healthiest, but it is a way to do it. having fun there.
Yep. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We will almost have it all set here. Yes, you guys get a little sneak preview where all our lovely viewers get to see it. All right, I think I have it all set now. So whenever you guys are ready, we may continue. I'm good. I'm good. All right. We'll bring all our lovely viewers back in and they can see. <laughs> and not much has changed, but I have it all set now. That's what matters. So, you guys are left to determine what you're going to do to test your metal and prove that you are worthy to be warriors. Now, you hear about a number of different things and you listen in to the other trainees. They're all talking about dealing with some minor pests in the mountains, up near uh, Halars. There's some wolves that are, you know, annoying Beckets, and there's some bears that are bothering over near Torvalds. And uh, sorry, other way around. Um, wolves are bothering Torvalds, and the bears are bothering Beckets, and then. Bjork, or not Bjork, yeah, Bjork, in your travels yes. with your father, you hear something mentioned that rings a bell, something you've heard in your travels. To the west of Hakon's town, the main city here in Getfold, you, you find, you've heard rumors of Restless dead in the tombs of the kings. And you hear people are more and more avoiding that area. You hear about a giant beast of unfathomable size and destruction who's taken up residence in one of the caves of the mountains to the north. And you hear of giant beasts that are terrible even further north. They all sound terrible, but manageable. Only the ones that are there in the West. You think maybe the size and destruction of the North, you know, is something that maybe have to be dealt with later. But you speak with Raph. Raph? Bjora comes and talks to you about what you overheard some of the others talking about that there is some disturbances in the West and the old tombs of the old kings. And you recall in your training that they used to bury the kings in some burrows to the West and that they may have been buried with great wealth. And not all of them or necessarily of your type, your kind. There are stories that some of them were tyrant kings who subdued your people and made them serve, but eventually you rose up and defeated them and the existing tribe is what lives here now. So the path before you is set. Do you wish to hunt bears? Do you wish to hunt wolves? Or do you want to see about these ancient <laughs> kings and their restlessness?
What's your take, Kraf? I, for one, think we should rid the king's tombs of the walking. Unfortunately, uh, I can't imagine it'd be good for the spirit to be snagged from Valhalla due to a dead man's curse. <laughs> Raven. I think we lost Hruff. Maybe we did. Maybe we did. No! He's here. Did he acknowledge his return from the Ruff. No. What's that, Ruff? Slay the undead? <laughs> yes. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. That's exactly what we should do. Well, I mean, Jotnar and the Mute could also be consoled. It is, even if that's what they feel like. Apparently, Jotnar agrees with that option. Yonar, do you want to kill some big, big giant bears, or would you like to destroy the undead that are tainting our tombs? Poor dead people. Do you want to make them dead again? You Poor want to deal with the hell curse? Sleep. I've killed bears and wolves before. All right, then. I say that the hell curse is right up your alley. And to be clear, it's mute? H E L for everyone, you know. Hello, the goddess of yeah, for like the dead. Time. Yeah. Uh, subtle nod and a grab of the axe. I think that's a mighty swell idea. Just keep in mind. Right oh. That does mean that. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Out of character, what? That's what your character sounds like? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no words oh. were said. I said a slight. You're like, you're the like Plato. I was like, wait, oh, what? That's, that's why he's mute. No wonder why he doesn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we all know that hell no, no. works side by side with Loki, so I don't like the idea of Loki's taint being anywhere on Gatafold. I think this is where a sign gets held up. By the yeah, I, I need that sign. I need that sign. For those of you that weren't here before, I'm going to get a sign that just says that's what she said, because as a mute, I shan't be talking. But I want everyone to understand all the times that I think of a that's what she said thing. You're a taint. And it's, uh, it's upon me. And it shall not be. Nay, nay. Um... All right, let's get one thing straight, fellas. If we're going to do this, we need to elect a leader. Mjorik slowly pans his gaze towards Mute. The Mute, I need you to roll an intelligence check. <laughs> or else he's going to attack half the town. This is for something else, so you all continue talking <laughs> about the other thing while he rolls. Mjorik just suggested the Mute as party leader. I would say that's not a very good uh, intelligence check. Okay. Yes, you beat me in our strategy games. Oh, <laughs> you were talking about the one. <sighs> yeah. I knew that. Yeah. He's a little. He's a little small to follow. I uh. I I. Wow. Woke up on the wrong side of the bed channel. Today. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, do I have any bonuses that lets me roll again? Uh oh. <laughs> do we have inspiration? <laughs> DM. Uh, not for this. You will all get one well, point of inspiration for right now when you head out. This well, was for, for something in the past that I was seeing if he noticed. Is, uh, I didn't roll a very smart one this time. Maybe you were caught off guard by me suggesting that you're going to be the that you should be the leader, and whatever you were thinking about, you're like, wait, what? Actually, I was still thinking about Loki's taint. Maybe that would explain it. That would explain, that would explain it. it. He, he has nothing to say about being the leader. <laughs> I see yeah. what you did there, Raven. I'm watching I you. That. I see that. So, can we go back to the leader thing, or or is this this one rule? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you go back to it. That was for something oh, else. He'll... He'll tell us oh, when that will play. Oh, yeah. 
so, tell us why you want to be the leader. He didn't want to be the leader. He was chosen. <laughs> so, um, sort of. I, I look over back at, at Bjork and kind of give a half smile and a nod and look back at Hraf after he says such a thing and do kind of like a, uh, a wavy thing with my hand, like, uh, kind of like a, I'm making a little fireball or something like a poof poof, right? Like, so, you know, me. And then I look over at, uh, Jotnor and I kind of gaze up and I, I gaze back down and I say nothing surprisingly um but I look back at Bjork and I nod anyone else want to cast a vote we could do this the traditional viking way yeah let's fight for it I'll hand you all bill that's not the traditional <laughs> way Jotnar no um you're not gonna beat us in pillow fight I'm gonna go get a white pebble and three black pebbles and throw them in a in a empty sack and just kind of shake them up and then hold them out to each member and have them draw one. Casting lots. What? Uh, it's not gonna be me versus uh, Jotnar. <laughs> so you want one white and three black? black? Yep. Hmm. Could say that that's possible to do. But there is a bag, I believe you can... Oh, there you go. <laughs> it might be possible. I will go first, since this was my idea. Oh, crap. <laughs> what color was it supposed to be? Black? White. Oh, who got white? Well, that's so, uh... Um... I... I take my pebble and... It's not been exposed yet. And I kind of peek at it. And I look over at Bjork, who, even though he hasn't exposed it yet, I can tell right away just by his, his quick demeanor that he's not happy. Yeah, I'm not happy. My smile and is gone. So I get a bit closer to him. And I just kind of, with my clasped hand, kind of just start motioning over towards his. I slowly open my palm to re reveal the white pebble pressed on my skin. And I swallow a lump in my throat and I go, well, it appears the gods have chosen. Has anyone noticed his white pebble yet? Not if he hasn't shown everyone. I think he has. I throw it on the ground. Well, then Bjork it is. <laughs> All right, well, I, Bjork, just or Jarl, just let you know. I think uh, Viking was suggesting possibly doing a uh, hot swap. Oh well, he can't talk, so I didn't get that memo. Well, you had been working on your uh, mute language with him. Yeah, but my character's pretty religious, so he would have seen that as the gods chose. So he's not happy about it. But... Unless Loki intervene. He's made his decision, damn it. God, you're making me <laughs> second guess everything now. <laughs> well, I was I was strongly considering trying to do a sleight of hand or something. <laughs> <laughs> but That's cool. I don't know. I don't think Raph, uh, Raph doesn't want to be the leader. I think Bjork accepts his fate and we shall move on. I made my effort to save him of his burden, but he accepts it. And I respect that. All right. Food shouldn't be an issue. We should probably take some water skins before going in the tombs. Chances are there's not going to be any potable water down there. Wait, I have to come to... Oh. All right. Well... Craft, if you would much rather stay here and kiss the Jarl's butt cheeks, then by all means. I wasn't the thinking of, us... of it. It wasn't the Jarl I was thinking of. You leave Ragna alone. I <laughs> point at him sternly.
Uh, if you remember Ragnus, Stand the back. handmaiden. Stand mm -hmm. back. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, I don't, but Raph has a very good uh, memory. Is there any way uh, I kind of pull out my quarter staff? I really would like to get a spear point on this, but I don't have any money. And I kind of look over to Jotnar. Jotnar, you've actually you... been working in this town since yeah. you've, a, you know, apprentice smith. You would have been working with the blacksmith here some because of yeah, your. Uh... The better blacksmith is in this town too. So. Right. Um, and that's you know, are you our... be willing to make me a spearhead? Yeah. Oh, how long will that take? Will I be hitting it with a pillow or a hammer? Yeah, the, the blacksmith has given him. A... You know, <laughs> on second thought, maybe I'll pass. <laughs> Bjork, okay, you, you would know camera. that uh, Jotnar has been working with the blacksmith here, which is also actually the brother of the Jarl. Yeah, and, and Jotnar's got the experience so that he can make it for me, but I don't have the coin to pay the blacksmith. <laughs> but to ask your... Uh, uh, I have... I can't think of the word, not parent. Um, the... People, oh, sex, uh, sexy looking mama. After him. Sexy mama. No, the couple looking after him. Yeah, sexy mama. I don't need their help. He says, abashed. You've been hunting pelts and selling You them. want a point on that stick of yours or not? No, if I don't have a spearhead, I'll just use it as a staff. That, that's... Give me that thing. Do I have I, any weapons? I nervously hand my large staff over to Big uh, to Jotnar. <laughs> the big Jotnar. I just go to the. I just go take it to the smith's shop and put a put a spearhead on it. Well, smith's tools. Oh, let's see. And yes, you are all level one. Um, <laughs> Pick someone here in town as your contact, is what the contact would be. So for Jotnar, it's probably uh, Havard. You rolled, ten. you rolled 10? Yeah. Okay, 10 total? 10 on uh, the dice. Okay, that's on the dice. 10 on the dice, yeah. Which means you add your strength right. and your smith's tools for your proficiency bonus. So that no, would be plus what... eight. So that means an eighteen. Okay. We are full adults now. Yes. And was I given a weapon, or was it just for training that I had access to? It, it was for training, but you can probably acquire it if it's a basic short bow and dagger is available. I might have made a kick-ass weapon for you there, Bjork. Yes. You have a reach weapon that's Yay. versatile capability. It's reach when dual wield, you know, two handed. Uh, you can wield it in one hand if you want. It's a little bit unwieldy, but uh, it is possible. Um, and it's a D8, D10. Uh, no, actually, you're using two hands normally, aren't you? Because you wanted a great spear, you said. Yeah. Um, so that would be... It would still be D8, D10, because I have uh, polar mastery, so I can whack them with the uh, the other side. Yeah. It's just not versatile. Right. Yeah, you get a D4... Offhand attack. Right? Uh, his polar mastery allows him to do the other attacker. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you saying yours? Yeah, it is, it's a d4. A dagger's um, d4. Uh, short bow's a d6. 
Oh, no, with the Polar Master, he gets an offhand attack at the right. with the half, the half. Yeah, so it's so he has a great spear. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's nice. I picked up my hammer while I was at the smith shop, too, I guess. It's, we're getting weapons ready. Well, you can use your tree trunk. Oh, don't I have, like, a hammer that I made? You have a smith's hammer. Oh. But you probably wouldn't want to damage your tool. I mean, you can if I, you want to, but... Wicked's holding up his sign, I guess. <laughs> Never um... Wicked has an axe that does d6, and then text you'd have a club that does a d8, but since it's large size, it's 2d8. Because I checked out the DM's book, and they said for bigger size of a weapon, it doubles the die, which is interesting. Yeah. So there you go. All right, you guys head off. You get, let me move this off for a second. <laughs> Maybe like that. So if you look on the map, you'll see on the west side there along the mountains, there is an area that has five mounds with caves in them. Those are the burrows. And so you head over there. As you near there, you set up camp, and then that night you notice in the distance you see like some shadows moving. When the morning comes, you notice going back into one of the burrows, you notice some humanoid figures that are like moving awkwardly, like slumping. Um, but that is where they're headed in there. And so you head inside. This is <laughs> this is what is inside. Now you don't see all of it to start with, but it's nice and unlabeled. So for all you know, it's there. Oh, um, you said, sorry, you said we're level one, correct? Yes. So do I have a companion with me? You do have your raven. And good point. Um, as the house crawls headed off to battle and stuff, you guys do notice that um, Haraf is missing an eye and has a raven perched on his shoulder. Oh my goodness. Oh, I hope this tomb is handicapped parking. <laughs> well, you guys did give him a... He did bring a bone. He's a one-eyed I, I, bowman. I congratulate him. Raf, congratulations. It is a mark of honor. His yes. face. And the, I, would uh, just, the... I would just kind of look over and kind of look at the bird. And as I try to reach for the bird, it would paw at me, so I just kind of pull my arm back, and yeah, that's that's, Actually, that's all I have to say about it. Raph, how does the raven respond when Mute reaches for it? It, uh, yeah, it probably uh, turns his head quizzically at the Mute, and maybe when he reaches for it, he, he doesn't actually say anything, he hops over to the other shoulder, uh, to Raph's other shoulder. Okay. Well, either way, Bird clearly does not want to be touched. So, go back about the day. I will have better figures for everyone next time. But for this time, I'm just going to pull out some default ones. And we'll call it good. Um, because I didn't have time to get everyone's minis figured out. But for that, I am sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I'm oh, going to resize which them. One is text. I'm going to resize them to the correct size. They look pretty sizable. 
Well, they're a little bit wrong size for the map. <laughs> I squeezed through. <laughs> so. Wait, is, how do you make them move? Uh, right click on them and you can change their mode, like their stance. And you can do an attack or you can just die. Hey! <laughs> I didn't know I knew the reduce size spell. You don't, but I do. Raven cast mini. <laughs> You're still not small enough, Tex. There we go. <laughs> you have to make the map bigger. Maybe make us, yeah, make us bigger on the map. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins! Well, you know. Yes, indeed. You could Leroy Jenkins the shit out of this cave. <laughs> yeah, that he could. <laughs> okay, so that's... So they have a cave yeah. troll. Pretty much. See, does he fit correctly now? Close. We'll call that good for now. Yeah, don't um, strain yourself. We we know what we're doing. <laughs> this one. No, you're good. I'm just I'm trying to get it at least close. You know. <laughs> Let myself down. You enter through that doorway, and you guys now can tell me where you want to go, what you want to do, and we'll go through it. Lead on, valued leader. Oops, wrong hockey. The, the door that's set in front of us. Oh, first off, is it dark in here? It is dark. We don't have torches. Oh, you, you need a torch. Hi, right, we can need to reload last see. checkpoint. Someone fast can, travel back to town. I, I, can, I can see perfectly fine. Excellent. What's that door in front of us made of? I can't really see it very well. I can look at the door. I have, I have, let me just double check here. Um, so as you look in, Raph, since no one else can see, at the junction there, you do notice there's some alcoves cut into the wall. So basically right where Jotnar is standing on there, there are some alcoves which you can see. So basically you guys would be out here looking into the cave. And uh, you notice it's been tunneled and Hraf would step in or could look in and he would actually see that there's some alcoves there. Just on the side uh, of the wall. Stick my hand in. No. I, I look inside first. You notice that there's a few torches there. In the script written there. <laughs> it would make sense though. They used to keep torches outside the tombs. Yeah. There'd just be a pile of them. The dead have been entombed. And that's what the script says. And it references there's further script elsewhere in the tombs. But that is what is here. Looking ahead at the door that you were indicated to look at, you know, pointed to. You see there is a door. It is a well-made door, and it is just there ahead. Now, do you wish to inform your companions of the torches and let them join you? Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to tell them about the torch, even though this, actually, they don't know I can't see in the dark. As soon as I went in... You just uh, told them you could see fine. But they don't know. Okay. Yeah, I said I could see... Yeah, I can see fine, and I'll uh, light one. Because if it's pitch black, I can't... I still have disadvantage, so I will light one. Yeah. Um, how do you light it? That's a good question. If we need to, I can go outside 
I can grab some king's moss, uh, some sticks, and some foliage and try to do a bow, stick and bow. You would have probably some uh, small piece of iron or steel and a bit of flint, like basically an early age, you know, tinder set. All right. I like that. I like tinder. So you can light the torches if you wish, and now you have torches. Something you'll want to be prepared for next time, because they may not have them for you. But this is called the prologue, and so some things are made nicer for you. We flipped on the easy mode switch. No, you're just in the tutorial phase of the game still. Torches, you need to bring your own when you enter a dungeon. <laughs> okay, so let's get let's get doing the things. So while they're looking at the door, I'm looking down the open way. The open way without the door. Okay. That is just a hall. Okay. I'm just looking that way. Yep. There's a hall. And I will actually take a quick peek down this way. Um, do you guys know how far light is for torches or not? Yes. Torches is 20 feet uh, bright light radius and 20 feet dim light radius after that. Correct. Which means you can see fine for 20 feet. And you can have disadvantage 20 feet beyond that. And you can't see beyond that. So I can't see the turn, but one eye, Willie there, can. Correct. Yeah, when I'm in, as long as I'm in the dim light, I can see normally. So you look down, you see there's a hall that continues down and then turns back towards the room. How many torches did we light? I three, maybe four. Depends on if you all are carrying one or not. I guess we probably just did three. Okay. So, as we walk in, and uh, I, I guess I, I would I would say we, I'm again going to wait for our fearless leader to select a direction of travel. I'm waiting for my turn because other people said they were doing actions, so I'm letting them do their stuff. Any other actions yet? I have not heard. Are you nope. guys done peeking down that other hallway? Yeah, I was just doing a quick peek. If you want me to go down there, I'll uh, need uh, someone to come with me. A little bit of light. I'm going to go ahead and do an investigation check on that <laughs> one. That is okay. a 20. Investigate what? So I'm, I'm doing an investigation check, traps, locks. On the door ahead of you? Yep. I'm it is not green. locked. It seems to just be able to be turned and opened. And no signs of traps to protect the tomb? Not that you've seen. Not here. Alright, so since I'm the one with the torch, I'm going to open the door, <coughs> stick my torch hand in so that the others can go past me inside. Okay. Hello. I'll move into there. Let's... Yeah. General rule of thumb, I'm always going to let the big tank in there first. <laughs> but hey, he's know. the last one in. Leroy so Jacobs! The door is <laughs> stuck, but it seems like it would open. So you turn it and it seems to try to open, like you hit the latch. Just a little bit stuck. You guys aren't Do able to actually open it. Check? Mm -hmm. Or you can have someone else do it. 
I don't want the door destroyed because in the end it will roam the area outside. 21? 21's enough, yeah. You pop it open, like push it, and it slides open. Perfect. I'm going to move to the center of the room uh, and take a look around, but I'm going to stay in the center so that everybody okay. has bright light. There's a wooden portcullis there on... Basically, you came in the north side of the map, okay? And so on the east side, there's a wooden portcullis, and on the west side, there's another door. Um, is there a compass object you could throw on just for ease of reference? Like a little compass rose or something? I have not seen one, but I'll see what I can do. The north do, th do third grade map logic. If, we, if north. we haven't... But for you and I, that's not true. Down is north. Oh, that's right. Y'all are looking at that's, mm -hmm. why, that's why I was trying to get an arrow, maybe an arrow object well, or, or something. Well, to... An easy way is up to where uh, Diamond X's spot is, which is over... There it is. This way. The Monopoly North House. North is right. the green. Got it. Yes. Because I rotate my table frequently in Tabletop Simulator, so I'm always facing different directions. All right. Um... I'll make a perception <laughs> check if no one else is going to do anything. Oh, percep. Okay. If, if you tell me, I, I'm probably going to be doing that. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to micromanage everybody. I'm just looking around. Okay. Roll your perception. I don't see shit. <laughs> I, I critically fumbled it. I think what happens is some of the fire falls off the torch and lands on my hand. I'm like, ow. That's about right. Uh, 26. 26. You hear Bjork be like, ow, as the torch, you know, has some of the ash and stuff drip down on his hand as it burns. You notice that they're on the south side of the uh, room. There is actually a large skull that's been carved and inside the skull you actually notice there is an area that you can shift when it and it looks like it can shift open um, i found something over here i'm going to move over there and take a look at it See, upon huh. further hmm? i wonder no, if ahead. that opens the portcullis the portcullis is closed. Do you want to fiddle with it or do you want me to? You notice on the other oh, side no, of the portcullis. sitting there talking about it. I'm just going to walk over and pull it. I'm going to pull it. <laughs> uh, an acid trap goes off and my face will talk about like, why would you do this? <laughs> it could. Um, the portcullis you notice on the other side, it looks like there's a lever that may be connected to opening it but not on this side. So even though uh, Wicked uh, opened what needed to be opened in the skull, did that do anything? So upon having Raph talk with you, you, he shows you the tooth that looks like it's not quite the same. You push it and you notice it's the lever and the iron door slides to the side with some grinding noise. The iron door on the uh, west? Uh, in the south, that where the skull is. Here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh there's a door behind it. There's a secret door. It is. Excellent you can't see the secret map. doors. Because this is the map that you can see of stuff that's, you know. I don't like that. You need to bring back the uh, other map. <laughs> um, so I'll go in with the light just so that we have something. But uh, as I go through, I make sure that my long spear is hefted at my side. Okay. Well, I go through right, right beside him. I, I got his, I got his, his side. As you peek so into the room. Marching order is you, me, Big Tex, and then Raven. <laughs> you notice there oh. is a door. However, there's also something else. Uh, 
uh, just so that we're getting the movements, um, do we all enter the room and then the thing responds, or is it just when the mutant I enter the room? The first people who enter, so right as you guys enter, so Jotnar would be just behind you, ready to come in, like walking okay. through. So as you two enter, it turns and makes a nice raspy noise at you. All How right. far is ten feet on the or twenty feet on the map? I need to know what is so, each each little tiny square is five feet. So yep. We're actually supposed to be like in the squares themselves or as yeah. close as we can get. Um, so, for example, if if we were actually coming in here, uh, I can't. There's too many hands in the area. I'll just if we were coming in here since the marching order was, you know what? These stupid pawns are making it. <laughs> there we go. It would be you and then Yotnar would be back here. If you yeah. right click, you'll actually make them go down to the ground. And then you can kind of slide them across the ground. Oh, okay. That's or you can better. change the pickup height on the top. The lift height is so the guy with the a... weights. Are we rolling an initiative? Yes. Sweet. I get advantage on initiatives. Yotnar, wow. is there a reason you keep dropping yourself? I don't want to pick myself up. Okay. Deselect yourself. If it has a yellow highlight on it, it means you've selected it. You just need to click off somewhere. Just click on the map. Okay. Oh. I think. Roll a d20, add your dex modifier. Is that for everybody or just Yep. Girl? Yep. Everybody. I just get to roll twice and take the higher roll because of uh, my scout ability. Uh, what class did you pick? Was it rogue? Scout. Or... Nope. Scout. Oh, scout Oh, scout is oh. the actual class. Okay. Yes. I got an eight. And what it's do we add to no, it? It's a no magic ranger, basically. Yeah. All right. right. You add your um, dex you modifier. Add your dexterity. Yep. The plus okay, so number rolled, next to your dex. I rolled a 13 and got a one, so I got a 14. Correct. And I have a 13. 18. Eight total. So it goes Hraf, the Mute, Yorick, and Jotnar. And let me see, they got a... One, so they got a 13 as well. What's their dex mod? Uh, no, wait. They got a motion to... They got a 10. So they're right before me. Yes. What happens when the uh, numbers aren't lined up with their stat? You can, you know, see the wrong one on accident. So, there we go. They got a 10. So, everyone goes before them other than Yotnar. And then they go, then Yotnar goes. So, uh, Raph, you hear, the, you hear the noise of a... Uh, come from in the room. And do I know what it is? No, you can't see it. Then I will move into the room. Um, let me just... So... I... So it's 10 to get past Yotnar. That'd be 15, 20 to get where you're at here. That'd be 30. I'm gonna, st yeah, I'm gonna stay hugging the wall. And if I... Do... Can I see what it is now? Yes. You notice a humanoid figure, similar to what you saw shambling in. There. Skin is dried and gaunt. It looks to be dead, but it is not. And you notice a faint I... glow from its eyes. So, did you happen to finish the magic? Send it to me, or did I not... Mm, I didn't. I'm sorry. I did not say You have right. the um, direct focus, so basically you can do a touch attack with it, or you can use your bow. Right now we can just uh, oh, do other things. Uh, how many arrow, uh, arrows do I have? Standard quiver is... what was it? 20. 20, I think. Yeah. You probably have 20. I guess then I'm going to... See if the bow does any damage to it. If the arrow does. Okay. Roll an attack. Twenty-two. That should hit. Mm-hmm. 
seven points of piercing damage. Okay. As I, yeah, I, I, okay, I go, oh, so that's what this commotion's all about. Because, uh, Yorick said to, for me to go in last, but I just, as soon as he said that, they all stopped and I go, what's the hold up? And I walk in, I go, oh, all right. And I fire. Yep. So you, you walk into the room as they're responding as well. And so, uh, Bjork, and then the mute. Is this creature a. Uh, oh, the other way around, actually, sorry. I think the mute first, yeah. Yeah, the mute, and then Bjork. Oh, we never picked up any armor. We're all armorless. Do, do they have a, an initiative tracker for tabletop? They don't. However, we can oh. get one. I found one, and I haven't been able to get it implemented to work correctly quite yet. Um, so there is one that That's has been cool. made, but I, you yeah, know, if we I'm trying to get the table right built. Here. And like I said, this yeah. past weekend has been, if, if you give me permissions on it, I can manage the initiative in future combats. So go, uh, it is now there your you turn go. wicked. Thank you. Wicked. You can move up to six spaces. Oh, so quick thing. Uh, did we get any, we don't have any armor when we were uh, training, did we? So you had some armor when you were training once in a while to try it on, make sure you knew how it worked and everything. We don't have armor to take yeah. off. Uh, I don't believe yeah, any of you yeah, went no, to try yeah. to get any. Okay. So is diagonal a move or is it side and down? Depends on which rule you go for, and I don't like making it so every other costs extra, so I just say it's standard move. It means technically you can move a little extra going diagonal, but it's a lot easier to manage. So for ease, diagonal counts as five. Any direction counts as five for each square. So I could move right up onto it. Yes. So do I, I never started with the light, so I can see him pretty clearly with what he is right now, correct? Yeah. You can tell he's dead. Yeah, well, that and I have a torch that's lighting dead. up the entire room, yep. pretty much, so you're good. Okay. So, yeah, knowing that he looks like a an ugly, brutal, yet brittle skelly boy, I'm going to take a shot at his nearest leg and try to see if I can't disable movement um, to prevent him from coming towards the group. Okay, so, so you roll a d20, you add your strength modifier, and you add your proficiency bonus, which didn't stay on your sheet when I told it to. It's a plus two. So you'd roll a d20 and add plus five. It's a 15. Hmm. That hits. So now you roll a d6 and add your strength, which is plus three. So d6 plus three. Eight. You did eight damage to this thing. Now, since I have two move space left, can I go back a little bit now that I hit, do like a little hit and run, or is it a move attack? If you do, he'll get an attack of opportunity on you. He gets one per round. Um, so you're better off standing there. And honestly, you'll see uh, my character's combat abilities. It works really well if you stay put because I can help you. I don't need to be standing next to him to hit him. Cool. Groovy. Let's see. Does it show? Yes. Go to the second page of your document there. Um, Viking and text. You'll see fell handed. That's the feat you got you're going to want to read that because you actually had an additional plus one on your roll because you're using an axe. Hit and for damage, I think. No, just attack, sorry. Attack. So 16 rather than 15, right? Is that what it yeah. was? Yeah, and then still eight damage, right? Right, but you'll also notice uh, under certain circumstances you do some other nice aspects. So if you have advantage on an attack, you can knock the target prone. If you have disadvantage in the lower would have, you still do some damage. Um, if you use the help action to aid an ally while you're wielding your weapon, 
you knock the target shield aside, which means if they're using a shield, they get a uh, they don't get their shield bonus to their AC when they get attacked. On top of the normal stuff of you eating. And one of the things that is awesome about the help action is if you're a tank or if you're stuck in a position or your weapon is ineffective against your target, you can say, I'm going to help Jarl. And then when I attack, I get to do so at advantage because you're helping me. So it's not a complete waste of your turn if you can't damage something. Especially with that feat. So, yeah. So if you have like a fire axe and you're going against a fire monster, chances are you're not going to do much against them. You're better off helping an ally. Does his superiority die do this? Do you have tactics of some kind? If he uses it, he can, yeah, he can use his superiority die. I forgot to get his maneuvers on there. That was me fail. But he has two maneuvers. Um, It'll probably be better the first few battles for him just to get to know the basics, and then we can flourish it with his abilities. Yep. Yeah. That's Um, what I thought. And so Jarl is up with Burek. This is an... uh, is this an undead humanoid? Yes. So I have favored enemy humanoids. So I'm going to step right behind. Well, it's not um, classified as a humanoid. It's classified as undead. It's classified it as is undead. Okay, a former exactly. humanoid. Former human. Formerly, it's the artist formerly known as humanoid. Exactly. Um, because my weapon is reach, I'm actually going to stand right behind the mute. And as soon as he makes his attack, the mute will see my spear blade jut past his head and attack the undead. Um, I get advantage on attacks because of Natural Explorer because this undead has not acted Mm -hmm. yet. So, my first roll is a 12. My second roll is a 13. I'll take the 13. And my modifier for that weapon is plus five. So that makes it 18. That hits. Oh, your damage. Oh, I will. Um, I'm going to... Let me check something real quick. And there you go, Viking. and you get to start bashing things now. What did you do? Okay, so I'm No, just saying, to... this guy, you get to kill him. You said you wanted to, you know, fight things, kill things. Oh, okay. Yes, I like fighting and killing things. So my first attack is going to be nine damage. And then my second attack is a bonus action because I'm using the rear end of the weapon. Also gets it. Actually, um, not to be mean to you, so go ahead and go for that. And I'll, you know. No, it's okay. What were you going to say? Um, how do you want to do it? <laughs> With your second attack, oh, okay. how do you finish him? So let's say that the mute's got an axe, right? So let's say yep. that the, the mute's axe just Stuck embeds in his, in his chest. And as the mute pulls the wound out, it kind of spins the undead a little bit. And then my spear goes right through his temple. Nice. You have a nice black hair kind of go on the back wall. And the light in his eyes fades. Excellent job. Actually, I wouldn't have been able to do that bonus attack anyway because I would have had to drop my torch. Good point. So my bonus my bonus action would have been dropping my torch. Uh, so I go back and pick my torch up again. So, well, well you were doing the help action? Or no? You had no. A, no. No. You had an extra I attack. Two-hand, I have an extra attack because of Polar Master. And right, I, right. Uh, unfortunately, it's a two-handed weapon, so I would have had to use my bonus action to drop the torch. Yep. So you're able to pick it up. Um, what does this room look like? It, it seems like this may have been one of the chambers for a sarcophagus or a, a tomb of some sort. Uh, let's see. It seems to be a basic stone room. It looks like he had been entombed here. And there's only one other door le- leading away from here. Do not take any treasures you find. If there is a body here in a tomb, do not take the treasures, or you will forever be damned by the gods. Depends if they're buried honorably, right? This is the king's tomb, so I would assume... Uh, Raph had told right? you not all the kings were honorable ones. 
Some of them oh, were actually shit, tyrants. Shit, Raph. Raph, you better go and start reading these runes and find out how this yep. guy got here. <laughs> That's the thing. You need to d d see if there's any descriptor here that says if this guy was honorable or dishonorable, thereby determining that. I was going to take history, but oh, I ended up taking medicine instead. <laughs> Well, I don't think reading runes would be a history check, though. No. Well, I didn't even get to attack him, did I? No, no. I don't think the runes say if they were No, I, sorry, I, Yopnar. Your, your, it's okay. He didn't get a chance to attack back either, so. No. I, I was following along. I just had to oh, mute because I called I see what you're saying. You're thinking it might just be a nameplate and not like, here yeah, lies was... blank Slayer of the Dragon or whatever. Exactly. So I may not know about the. Uh, but we'll, it might say, it might not. So we'll. Let's hope it does. So, I mean, roll an investigation roll, to see if you can find where that is. I'd like to uh, aid him with that action. Or sure. you can aid me. Yeah, so that you get advantage. I, I'm not good at this investigation. Oh, well, then I'll take it because I think my investigation is actually pretty lit. Let me check. Yeah, I have a four. I have so you... a one. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and roll at advantage then. That way we get the we get the booty. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking over uh, your shoulder. 22. Raph, I think I found something. And I like clear away some uh, mold that's been growing on the wall. Exactly. And uh, if, the, if the DM would like, I, I I would like to roll nature check to see if this mold could probably be given to Raph for some sort of healing. Welcome, twin tadpole. Sure. Roll. Um, that would be a 14. It's a basic moss. Um, nothing no. that has medicinal purposes as far as you know. But it's uh, also not of... toxic, luckily. Get out of here, Karen, and I throw the moss on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Moving away the moss, you find ancient runes. You don't know how to read them. Actually, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, I took Linguist. And... Oh, I, I said that Bjork doesn't know how to read these runes. Oh, Bjork doesn't. Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to... I would know that, so... Because I, I can't even read normal. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold my torch. So, so rough. Actually, yeah, so I took... I get three languages. I took runic spoken, so I can read and write them now, both Norse and runic. Uh, I took hand speech... Uh, whether they taught me or not, that's going to be interesting. Maybe I just picked it up. And, Could be. Uh, Real quick question about the runic uh, DM: Would that be, still technically be dwarven? Um, or is no, it different in your world? It's different. Okay. Um, cool. they use a similar alphabet, but it's basically ancient Norse is kind of the equivalent, or ancient common is what your characters may think of it as because the standard language you speak would be kind of considered Norse. Fun and fact, so it's... there's actually a hidden language in Dungeons & Dragons and a lot, not a lot of people choose and that's human dialect and it's like all all human dialect mm -hmm. which is kind of a fun little language to pick in case you guys ever want to in future games. Bunch of little fun things like that. So, uh, so I hold my torch so that he can make his roll. Yes. Well, actually, the third thing is, so I took runic spoken, because you said that's a separate linguistic thing, hand speech, uh, whatever we're calling it. Right. Uh, and then the third one, I didn't know what to take. Is there anything that I would have had access to? You have ancient runic that you read. Yes. And you have Norse and yeah. then Norse written. So that's three. Well, I have uh, no, I have both. Okay. Speak and write Norse and runic. Okay. I'll be and, right back. And then I took, because I took those as my apprentice, uh, I took languages. So I have ah. basically, I have, I have one additional language I can take. Um, it just from a ancient Scandinavian lore standpoint, Elven might not be a bad idea. I mean, they own one of the planes on Yggdrasil, and a lot of the enchanted items in Norse mythology were to be believed to be from the Elves. 
It's either going to be Jotun or Elf is what I was thinking, unless there was another one. But Elf, if that works, with uh, would I have had access to learn that? It would be another runic script. Um, it'd be a foreign <laughs> runic. But yes, it's basically you can write Elven down. Okay, so I have that, uh, I guess, written. Because mm -hmm. it's probably easier to start off with that. Uh, okay, and then I have create ciphers so that's an ability i have right so, okay so <clears throat> i am doing you could have checked they, in my they're they're sending you more pictures up so you Say, come up wrath and read this I, script I can't it have, is an, the ancient runic I can't have and you read a descriptor and it's <laughs> saying you know curse be this individual he's Cause pain and suffering on many. May he be locked in here for all eternity and not given rest. Oh, great. Well, we already fucked that up. <laughs> no, we're, we're great today. Uh, did we mess up a dream for a guy? No, like he was he was supposed to roam this room for all of eternity and never rest. And we're like putting this. Well, <laughs> well never rest doesn't necessarily mean never slain. It just means that these, they, they don't want him to go into... The afterlife. Valhalla. We're basically oh, cursing him that's... to In other words, cursing him to hell. Shut up quick, because he's about ready to revive. We gotta get out of here. Basically, they're, they're no. commending his being to Helheim and not to Valhalla. So I I motion to the room and say, "All right, well, uh, anything you guys find in here, you can keep." Yeah, that's what I was saying. And so there you find. Um, some gold. Do you want to? Do you want them to roll a perception check, or is it just on his body? You find it in his sleeping area. Basically, he has like a slab, and next to it is where the treasure is, because it's a standard kind of like Norse burial. They buried him with his ill-gotten gains, essentially blood money they don't want to touch, right? Because of the <laughs> yeah, notoriety he had. Do we want to? I was just gonna say, should we touch this cursed gold? Is this gonna be a Pirates of the Caribbean thing? It, it's not cursed in the sense of it's cursed like that necessarily. It's that um, they didn't want to touch his stuff because they didn't like him, sort of thing. You know, you're the tyrant's right hand. Bastards. We don't want to deal with you or anything of yours. Just get out of here. Uh, I, I do a blessing of. Uh, I bless the money. <laughs> Looking at the coins, you see they're very ancient. They're very ancient silver coins. Um, so, upon hearing, upon hearing Bjork say you can have whatever you'd like, um, I go over to this drugger, because that's what I call them, and don't judge me, um, and I start to investigate, finding the money, but I'm more looking for weaponry or any sort of armor that he may have been laid with. Mm -hmm. You actually do find he has a great sword that he was buried with. It is a large sword. Technically, so it I... shouldn't be considered a great sword. It's D and D five. He calls it a great sword, but it actually is a long sword, a two-handed sword. So I bend down and I pick up the sword. And it's not necessarily my style, um, but it's big. And so first I hold it up towards Jotnar as a, uh, well, since you didn't get in here to fight because everyone else took your glory, do, do you want something to go pokey pokey instead of thunky thunky? Nope, nope, nope. I'm happy with my club. To be clear, to Jotnar, it'd be like an arming sword. Okay, well, uh, standard when, sword. When Jotnar turns it down, I then turn to Bjork, who um, only has his staff and the next one in my mind that would need a combat weapon. I shake my head and wave my hand at it. No, thank you. Very well. Um, last one, I turn to. Uh, um, I don't really 
expect him to want this, so I kind of shrug my shoulders while I look at him and see what he says. He gives you a look. Like, really? Uh, so, just so you know, Wicked, out of character, part of the reason why I turned it down is because they don't go for much money and they, they kind of weigh a lot. Like, we'd be better off collecting treasures than the sword. Well, that However, was, it is that worth the experience. Thought. That was the uh, thought. I, was... I can carry it if we need to carry it, but... I... I take the, sh the, the, the large sword and I place it kind of back by the secret door that we came through. Um, if we have the room for it to pack it out on the, on the leave, we'll take it with us. Um, but if not, I'm not going to keep carrying it. Okay. In, in here you find it's a small box that has 50 silver coins in it. Money is good. Um, do Does anybody have pouches or anybody carrying a uh, form of backpack? Uh, oh, a, goodness gracious, I, words are hard. A basket of any kind? I have like ample bags to carry stuff with. So I, I always used as the mule. Yeah, you and our so sacks I, are huge. My yeah. sacks are huge. He's got a big log and big <laughs> sacks. Um, so I, I motion over because I am the closest one to the, to the body as it falls. I motion over to, uh, Jotnar to, to come close, and as he gets there, I start just scooping the silver and placing it upon his luscious large sack. Or within his sack, I was more just making an inappropriate joke. Well, luckily we say that it's adult time. content, right? <laughs> what? You, you place. I I signaled you over, and as you came over, I started scooping the silver and placing it inside your your bags. Yeah. There we go. So. You're now in this room. Door. Things are quiet. Well, Is there we anything further within the room to, to look for? Did we check any other, There's any a other door. corners? Was he laid with anything or just what's on his person? I uh, know we can see with some light in here. The money that was yeah. there was actually next to where he was laid to rest, not on him himself. But yeah, that's all that was in this room, was the money, that weapon, and him in his resting spot. Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah. I, after doing that, I step out of the way and look over at Bjork. I move over to the door, and I'm going to examine it to see if it's just a wooden door, uh, or if there's any locks on this. Sure. Roll. I will roll an investigations. Uh, 13. Well, you try to open it. It doesn't seem to move. But in doing so, you notice you're just shy of triggering a portcullis that would slam shut. Hmm. I don't have a way to disarm traps. Does anyone else have a way? I can just hold it up there. That's what I was no. going to say. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you, Yo Yotun. Go ahead. Yo, well, I, just... I mean, I just called you a derogatory term for giant. I apologize. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to uh, kind of stick my tree up there and kind of hold it up there. Roll strength check. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I'll have the strength. I mean, you only have a plus six. Yeah, I rolled a nat 20, so... <laughs> like, 20, only a wow. You hear him... Sarcasm. He's like, yeah, I rolled a nat 20, so yeah. I'm in D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I think he's grown up. He's known he's strong, but he probably doesn't think as that he's that strong. Right. Because he was growing up, and it's like I right. don't think I can do that. And it's like, oh, I can do that with my pinky. All right. So like he he puts it up there, and he accidentally pushes too hard, and you hear. <laughs> And you notice he's actually jammed the whole thing sideways, so now it's absolutely <laughs> jammed in place. <laughs> oh, well, excellent. With that being said, okay. I move up to the door and I try to open it. It is locked. And I and I trip open. on the body. It is a it is a stone? stone door. It looks like well, it should be able uh, to move, and it's not moving. Do you want to try to break the, the door as well? Yeah, we. No one can pick a lock, right? So. I don't think any. I think the lock is on the outside. If I'm being honest. Right. So I guess I'm just gonna try to wedge it open. All right. Strength check. Now I roll one. You are the brute squad. No, oh, another nat twenty. Yeah, I don't think I can do this. Who <laughs> does it again? <laughs> He's like, I, I can try. And he like reaches <laughs> for the door, but misestimates the distance and just puts his hand right through it. Oh, <laughs> uh... I just read your message, Solo Dad. That's hilarious. Yeah, that <laughs> comes in with the like the nice words. Yep. So now there's this huge slab of stone that's just been like knocked over and a hole blown out of it. Um. I'm gonna hold the torch up and look inside and see if we have any more undead friends. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take my pecking order and move in as as I'm kind of. Uh, well, first oh, we need to see what he places before we enter the room. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. Well, then I'm gonna. Because there could be like eight guys. There, there could be eight guys yeah, in there. And I opened and the if... door, so who knows? Yeah. I kind of came through the door. You just walk in there and it looks like a casting couch situation. There's like nine of them. They're like, we've been waiting for you. This room is empty. Except oh, for that's... the tomb that is there and unmoving figure. No glowing eye. Eight. Basically, Eight it's, a figure? it's a mirror room to the room you're in. Mm -hmm. But unlike the room you came from where there's that figure that was up, this one's laying there as a peaceful, rotting corpse. Huh. Okay, cool. Just in case, I will read what his uh, plate says. Okay. You have to find it. His dog tags. Yeah, can I'll, you... Uh, I'll roll an investigation in advantage again, since I imagine you'll be helping me. No. Oh. Well, you have to order me to. And... Six. So I have 16 total. Okay. After a little bit of time, you're able to find it. And Haraf reads it. It is a statement of very contrary to the opposite one you just read. This guy resisted the tyrant and tried to help those and was buried as essentially a guard or buffer from the previous individual you dealt with. Yeah, Sounds I very think. familiar to your mentor and the one he stood against and was slain by. That you know, sometimes there's good and sometimes they're bad and sometimes they're colleagues. Got Dumbledore and Snape over here. <laughs> Only Dumbledore was actually the bad guy all along. Oh. We didn't say there are spoilers. Oh, shit. Sorry, I thought 20 years was long enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. Next, you're going to say that Loki's a half uh, giant or something. Half human. <laughs> right? Well, I've never watched Harry Potter, so that is kind of a spoiler to me. So if that's a real thing, then uh, cool. No, it's not Thanks a real thing. Dumb Dumbledore is not a bad guy. It's for telling me. <laughs> Him and Gandalf, they were there when Diggy died. Loki is a uh, Yoden, or at least half Yoden or something. So but I think the, I think the statue of uh, is uh, well passed on the Norse mythology. The door before you here is a wooden door, similar to others you've seen here. 
but it's just a basic wooden door. And it's shut. Alright, uh, I'm gonna try to open that wooden door after investigating it for traps, because that porthole has me freaked out now. So, uh, how's a 12 for you, DM? Does that find any traps? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know why I'm at... I'm all mad at you because I rolled shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to blame um, somebody, right? All right, I'm just going to open the door then. It opens fine. And before you, you see a hall. A ten foot wide hall. That travels down a ways beyond your sight. All right, I got it from here. Okay. And Let's see your I'll investigation keep... track. <laughs> What's not investigation? I'm going to just... Yeah, I'm gonna just walk up until I can see if he can run and see if he trips. So, yeah. A giant metal trap yeah. opens. 40 foot ahead is what you're able to see, right? Because you can't see in absolute darkness. Uh, well, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have a yeah. torch. Okay. Well, uh, what's the dim light? Oh, no, Not the dim light. Torch. The dim light should make it till right about. Oh, how do I make an arrow? Uh, You hit tab, which makes a measuring tape, and you yeah, can click. Okay. So you just left click yeah, where you want you it can, to show. It's it's dim light straight up to the door. You're good. And yeah, I can see right up to the door. So within sixty feet. Okay. Hey, you're, yeah, you're able to see a door up ahead. That could have been over here. Yes. Yeah, it looks like a wooden door like the one you just came through. Yeah, I'll see there's a there's a door at the end of the hall. Uh, and the mute the mute runs up to it. I'm not hearing any, uh, oh my god, what the hell is that? So I just enter the room and cautiously walk down the hall. I don't run, but I do make haste. It is dark, and I would like to go home and eat soon. So yeah, this is just a basic wooden door. Like others you've seen here. And does a 19 find any traps on the door? You're pretty convinced this one doesn't have any traps, but it does seem like it is jammed a little bit. All right, well, I'm pretty strong, so I'm going to make an athletics check on it. Okay. Nat 20 plus 5 is so 25. You're able to pop that open. All right. Um, do we see anything in the room before we enter? This room has a faded and torn tapestry that's on the west wall. A large uh, figure uh, with reddish glowing eyes on the southern side of the room, so over here. And that is what you see in this room. I assume the figure <laughs> is not a statue, it's actually a creature from the looks of it. Uh, well, it's a little bit hard to see at this distance. All right. If um, you notice, it is, uh, you know, what, 40 foot away? No, more than that. Well, each of the big squares is 10 feet, so 10, 10 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So it's, yeah. it's well out of range. It's all pitch black over there except for the glowing eyes. Yeah, you can see like some reddish glow from the glint from the eyes when you move the torch. All right. So it's more it, that the torch lace is glinting risk. off some red over there. I'm gonna take a risk. I'm just gonna walk right over. Oh, I was gonna send the raven in, but okay. Send in the ravens. Oh wait, never mind. We'll just walk. Well, in. you would. You, I would still need to step in because doesn't the raven need some dim light or is it dark? Dark vision? Uh, no, the raven actually. That's true. We would have to toss the torch, and the raven can't by itself can't see in the dark. So, so. I, I just stepped a little bit in. So if you want to send your raven in, I still can't see it very well. I only stepped in so that the dim light would hit it. So you oh, notice, and I'll go. I'll walk up with the raven on my shoulder. And I'll you look. notice a statue. A Loki. Oh, uh, there's a little bit of a laugh, and he says, uh, "Yeah, it's a, it's a statue to Loki." The eyes you're seeing are actually rubies. 
Oh, good. If anyone's interested, you can take Loki's uh, eyes or rubies, but I wouldn't. You know, I would. You should destroy that. <laughs> the whole statue. Just smash it to smithereens and we'll take everything from it. I uh, kind of pause for a moment as I as as you're saying that, and I put my axe across your chest in kind of a stop, and I motion over towards the west wall as there's a tapestry on it that we can barely see in the in the dim light, and uh, I kind of motion over that way. All right. So I'm going to uh, go over to the uh, tapestry and, and take a peek, I guess. Okay. It's hard to make out much on it as it is very aged and weathered just from how old this area is. Can I see anything on it that's, that looks like runes or anything that can be read or is it merely a, a it's, picture? It's more pictures. It's images <laughs> that have been put there and the coloration and stuff is fading so it's very fuzzy it holds no valuable information unless you roll high enough to piece together little pieces of scrap yeah yeah I've got a plus three intelligence we can give this a shot I'm gonna I'm see if I can't understand what's going on so uh 13 stretch check just a swing at the at the statue. Okay, you hit the statue. Club in the head. Before yeah. he hits the statue, can I do a religion check? Sure. Just so I know if it's uh, smart to, to do that. Um, okay, well, I, I, I kind of like that we're all just doing our own thing at once. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so yep. he hits the statue. Well, to I be know. honest, that's why before you enter a room, you call for an initiative roll. Right. But so yeah. far this entire dungeon, people have been just moving their minis in the room. Yep. <laughs> well, see, this is what happens when you don't know things. So I rolled a ten plus three. I got a thirteen. Am I able to figure it anything out? Fall. You notice it's talking about um, battle between different types of giants and also the pantheon that you know. Um, large beings colliding in catastrophic damage, and small people being, you know in the midst on both sides. The further details you can't make out, but it was apparently a major battle. You notice the mountain range of your island there, so it obviously is this island long ago had a major battle of some sort with giant humanoids as well as smaller humanoids all clashing on different sides all serving different members of the Pantheon. So I take this cloth and put it in my pocket for further investigations later. This is a large tapestry. I look at the cloth and try to remember it for further thoughts later. <laughs> that would be more uh, doable. <clears throat> um, Raph, you said you wanted to make a religion check, so go for that. Uh... 15. You know that, uh, though Loki may not be liked, um, defacing him also may not be liked because he may decide to take interest in you. Which and is that's what I, yeah, I said. Not always healthy. I, which is why when I came in, I said, hey, there's rubies in his eyes if you want to take them, but I probably wouldn't. And then he goes to smash, and I go, really? Shh. Oh, too late. <laughs> so. So no lie, I think this is funny because Jarl knows what he was doing, and uh, this kind of played out just kind of kind of weird. I, no, I, I do heard exactly. this as, as the first dungeon that we're doing. I think this is a better way to learn. Oh hey, maybe maybe we shouldn't go in there like that. Yep. Also, uh, with the statue being broken of Loki, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I want to be a Viking hero, and I really don't care if Loki knows we smashed his shit. I, so I, hope, I hope he knows we smash this shit. I hope Loki <laughs> say something. I hope he do. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he catches me outside. <laughs> he might. All right, Tex. I get it. Yeah, I... Roll your damage for Jotnar. Do it. Do it. 
I think it's two die six. We're our two die right? Yep. Do I get a bonus to add to that or not? Nope. Yeah. Uh, your yeah yeah your damage? strength. Your strength. Okay, so it's uh, my damage is only three, so the bonus is six. So you rolled three on the die. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three on the die and well, six bonus, so it's die, nine it's total. Two die eight, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did good. Yeah. Um, you scuff it up a little bit, but not enough to really do a whole lot of damage. Well, I can swing again. If, unless However, did anything happen? Did anything happen? It made a very loud noise, drawing attention to yourselves. <laughs> Stab crack. Is that all you oh. got, Yotnar? Yeah, let's do it again. Okay. So, I hit it again. This time with uh, 15 points of damage to it. Okay. Now you see some damage has been done. It's cracking a bit. See, this is the first time in my life I've ever seen him not be able to break something. So I'm exactly. Like, and I shrug. It's like, it's like holy shit. What's going on? Right. What I, I, I notion to him, like, swinging my axe. Like, hit it again! <laughs> okay, 17 this time. That's still not doing much damage. I mean, I'm still doing mm -hmm. seven. Just a moment, if you would. He's like, you've unleashed the demon. Vigo the Carpathian steps out of the tapestry and kills us all. Right. Something yeah. may be coming down the hallway, though. It's a good thing it's the doors are still closed. It's funny how the brute can do less damage to a statue than, you know, two yeah, little people no. can do. Yeah, down listen, the you know, sometimes brute strength doesn't make up for superior training. What can I say? <laughs> I bet if there was a. Uh, uh, I'm not about to anger the tree. I don't think angering the giant. In either case, the statue or the or our companion is a smart thing to do. Well, the last hit was a was a was a good hit. It just the damage roll wasn't very good, but the hit was good. Especially oh, considering no, it was use a non-moving. It's a non-moving target. Uh, no. So they open the doors. I pick up a rock and throw it at somebody because. Uh, I would say I'm the closest and first one to be able to see. Uh, we got company, so I pick up a rock and throw it to uh, um, Bjork, because he's the closest I can see to try to get his attention. <laughs> yeah, I, I see the rock ladder, and I look over and see him coming in. Just a moment. We're still working on it. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait to swing at them. This is going to be fun. Hey, you, no you made a whole bunch of clatter. So, I mean, what do you think happens when you make a bunch of ruckus? The treasure is there's appears. a rose such a clatter outside. Out by the roof, there's a rose such a clatter. Just like in the poem. If right? anyone can that movie and can tell me what I'm quoting, I will love you forever. Uh... No rush, but if I could get another. Oh, it's a Christmas Carol, isn't it? Another D twenty. No uh, rush. yeah. Obviously, I can run to these two and just smash. Them. All right, let's roll initiative. I get there before they move. <laughs> initiative. <laughs> oh, Yarl! Look what they just got. Do they get to move everybody? No, each one of them is that's six of them, so. I gotta roll a D twenty for initiative. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there a bonus to it? Yeah, your dex modifier. Dexterity modifier, so you get plus one. So I got fourteen. Eighteen. I went, I'm trying to roll the other one because I have to roll. I got 12, and I'll just roll this one instead. 12, and he actually gets second initiative, to, and 14. So the Raven actually goes before me. Okay. 
they got a 18. All of, hmm. all of they? Yes. Yeah. All of they. All of there, them? There goes the advantage I get. Ugh, shit. Wait, that's... Uh, so, Jarl, you have the initiative there? Oh, we're, we're, no, they I, I, I rolled okay. a four. Wait. They're even with me. They rolled 18, I got 18. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how a tie is discovered, uh, Big Tex, is you have a dexterity modifier of plus one, and we would ask the DM, is their dexterity modifier higher than a plus one? And if it's not, then you go first. Theirs is lower. So, yes, you do get to go first, you have Oh, goody. Now, we can't ask him specifically what the de- dexterity modifier is, but we can ask him, is it lower or is it higher? Oh, yes. Oh, it's lower than one, so that's good. Well, look. Then I'll just that means use they have my 11 or less. My my frustration from not doing any damage to Loki and go after these two over here that are right there to my right. Yeah, you should be able to make that if your movement's 30. Yeah, I think I could. His movement's right I think 35. Yeah, he has 35 movement. Yeah. Thank God. I really hate it when big, like, creatures can't run as fast as the small ones. I'm like, how does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah, I covered the distance, yeah. One of your gates is taller than I am. Okay, so... And swing. Swing! He's also a barbarian, so it's just going to get faster when he gets higher level. Oh, oh, wait. Yonar's a barbarian? Yeah. Oh, dude, pop rage. Before you do anything, always say that you're going to rage. Yeah, but I can't yet. But he only has one. Uh, yeah, but we're in a... 15. Okay. Oh, yeah. We are in a battle against he six units, though. Two rages so... per long rest. And a raging gives him plus two strength. Or plus two damage. And he has advantage on strength. Checks oh, wait, and I can use that now? I didn't think yeah. I could use that yet. As a bonus action, you can use it. You just have to either take damage or attack on your turn. And then you can keep maintaining it. Okay. Which you oh. need to determine what your rage is. What emotion is it? Is it actual anger? Is it, um, you know, thrill of the fight? Like, what? what is your... Like, I, 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 don't, I disagree with the rage is always anger. Rage. I agree. It's, it, it's like a... If you're the Joker, right... For right. Batman, you would have rage, but it would be like psychotic laughter. Right. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So, so what emotion fuels Jotnar? His love for to protect everybody else. <laughs> yeah, he's just a big teddy bear. Yeah. So what he's asking you, Big Tex, is do you really get mad at the enemies to kill them, or do you get like bloodlust, where you're like, die? Well... At this particular time, it's like I, I'm mad because I couldn't damage the statue. So oh I'm yeah, damaging, that's good. I'm damaging these things. Okay. That came in at us. And I, I believe that uh, I believe that I hit, but I'm not sure. It's see, I, I rolled a, a fifteen. So. Fifteen hits. Yeah. And so the you, damage. You, you guys see Jotner's eyes go kind of like reddish. Oh, and he just runs over rage, there. Uh, there's a plus two to that, right? Yes. Plus so that means two. you're at a plus eight to damage. A plus eight to damage or plus eight with the hit? Is there plus also eight to, to hit? damage. It's, it's to damage. Oh, it's just to damage. Rage okay. doesn't give you a better hit. It gives you better damage. So you're at a plus eight to hit because of your proficiency. And you're at a plus eight to damage because you're raging. So 17 points of damage to whatever I hit of these two. Yeah, you just hit that first one, and he is hurting. You know what's dope about rage as well? You take half damage from bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing items. So if they try to bite you, you're going to take half damage. Nice. As long as it's not magical Poisonous damage or, magical. or yep. elemental of some sort. Yeah, it has to be bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing vanilla. Right. Yep. Um, you said I have... An a, t- a touch attack spell? Yes. Does that take spell points or is that a 
Like an at-will thing. It's an at-will. It's just a basic D10. Oh, so I have a D10. To- okay, then I think I'm the charisma based. I'm yep. Assuming. So, yeah, when you, when you get a second, no rush. If I can get a D10, or I'll just borrow someone else. If I do want to be like. Keep in mind, uh, you chose necrotic. <laughs> oh yes, I remember that. So that's why I'm probably not going to be doing that. That's a D20. I meant to do a D10. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else, Jotnar? Are you done? I don't think that I can do anything else. Um. I thought they had one other thing that you could do with while you're raging. You not get the bonus attack yet? No, there's no bonus attack. No, not yet. Yep. Oh, unless that's a subclass. Though. No, it's. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's, that's later on that you get that. Yeah. So no, we're we're, we're good. All right. I got these two covered anyway. So they're gonna turn and try to bite on you. Can eat this. So uh, you need to roll two armor saves. Is the way we're gonna do it. Where you guys get to roll your own fate. Two armor saves. Okay. So that's what. You roll a d20. Plus the dexterity. Plus your dex. And for you, plus your con. Oh, you got a plus five. Because an armored defense. Oh, right, right. You actually have a higher uh, defense uh, roll than I do. 17 plus 5 is 1823. Yep. That's plenty. You dodged that one. And okay. the second one? Yeah. It's nat 17, so I guess I dodge it too. Yep. 18. Yeah, I don't know how I dodged anything from these little guys. It's not that you dodge so much as they bite you and you just kind of like flex your muscle and shove them off. They can't puncture your skin. They're not able to hit me, right. They're not able... They they can connect, they just can't do damage. Right. Goody. Okay, so now they're going to move. So that one moves up to the mute, and that one moves up to Bjork. Bjork, that one's going to try to hit you. I need you to roll a armor save. been muted i apologize i get an attack of opportunity because of the uh polar mastery yep so i'm going to take that on the first guy i rolled a 23 that hits um the damage is six okay oh yeah you get the proficiency too there uh viking and for my defense um, the first attack I rolled a 7 and the second attack I rolled a 15 a 7 does miss alright do me the damage so that means they do where is it there it is so roll a d6 So get one. 
I got one over my world. There's one right there. Oh, well, thank you. Right? One. Can appear. Congratulations, you took two points of damage. Gross. <laughs> Gross, right? All right, and that's their turn. The others oh, couldn't I... quite make oh, their right. attack, and so they just moved up to get in position. Well, Raph and the Mute get to move now, right? Uh, and Bjork. All three of yeah, your teammates can now move. Oh, okay. Well, I rolled, I think, um, 14, so which you, that, I you have that uh, axe proficiency bonus as well. 14 hits, so that hits the one on you. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, I meant that I rolled 14 for initiative, so I don't oh. know if Raven goes or if I goes. I don't remember what Raven rolled. Uh, I think I had 12. Uh, my Raven had four, uh, 14. Yeah, so it'd be you first, then his raven, then him. Yep. Okay, let me get my roll on then. <laughs> you just rolled your character sheet? That's awesome. Yeah, I did that oh, earlier. No. Ow. So, uh, I gain a plus one to attack rolls, but I'm not through that yet because I don't think it happens. Is it uh, dexterity? Is what I add to it, or strength is uh, what I add strength, to it? Strength, because it's an axe, so and then plus, you get plus two for so, being proficient. So that's plus five on a one, so I got a six. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a miss. Yeah, so, so with attacks, uh, a one always misses no matter what. Okay. A one always misses, got... a 20 always hits. As long as you don't auto automatically hit yourself with a one. You're okay. We haven't introduced that quite yet. <laughs> God. You do you like uh, crit fail tables, Yarl? Um, it depends. Some of them are a little too stupid, like some of the crit twenty tables is like decapitate your enemy and I just think that's kinda dumb. Yeah. All right, so that would be the mute. So, is it Raf or Bjork? The Raven. Raf. Bjork. Okay. When, well, the the Raven. No, the actual yeah. Raven. Or, or uh, the Raven. Ra the Raven is going to give me the uh, not help but the whatever the combat help is. I forgot. You want to use the help action? Yeah, the help action in combat to give me advantage. It gives you advantage. Yep. Yeah. And Bjork, what did you get for initiative? Four. He okay, got four. So you, oh, you're you're leading from the rear. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know. The usual. Oh my god, that was a natural twenty. Then the black die hit it and it went to a one. Oh Isn't that no. fun. But but the black has a nineteen, so with my bonus, uh I'm going to be uh, I was attacking with the dagger because I'm in melee range. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to move right now. Yeah, that 19 will hit. Um, uh, well, it was a 19 plus 6, so 25. Uh, right. Uh, uh, seven points of piercing damage as I stab it. And realize... I really didn't want to come here, but I didn't speak up, and now I'm stuck here, <laughs> fighting these things that I didn't want to fight. Now you're wondering if you should have learned a different rune. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, well, I had that rune. I was we we're going to fight uh, undead. I thought, at least not so soon. I made you a black marble for your raven. Huh, thank you. All right. York? Um, so he went for his raven, right? Who? Raven went he, for both. 
For both? Yeah. Okay. I take the dodge action. The dodge action allows right. uh, me to grant disadvantage, which in this game, advantage on my defense against these guys. Correct. Mostly waiting for us to finish everything else off. <laughs> yeah. Don't not. Right. He's outnumbered. Don't not. Who are you? Yeah, <laughs> not really. Not really. Yeah. If we're talking one in them, kilograms, one of them no. into the wall. Yeah. One of them's already <laughs> not probably moving again, and then I swing at the other one. So. Okay, Yotnar, you're up. Yeah. So we have a. Another 17. That hits. If anyone has to hit, I'm glad it's uh, Yotnar. Yotnar. Uh oh. So 14 plus. Uh, 8. 14 plus 8. Right. So. Yeah, that guy's gone. I think you want to hit the one you already damaged? No, I was actually going after the other one, but... Oh. So you want to do the new one? Or you want yeah. to do the old one? I hit one, I was going to hit the other one. Okay, so you want to... Do you want to spread your damage, or do you want to remove the number of people on the field? <clears throat> Reduce the number is, probably, is usually tactically better. Tactically better? It's not what I was thinking, though. I was thinking I'd already melted one of them, and I was going after the other one. Okay, you hit one, and he was hurt, but he's not down. Right. And so you okay. have two on you. Do you want to hit the one okay. that you've already beaten up bad, or do you want to hit the one you yeah, haven't I'll hit? Yeah, I'll hit him again. I'll hit him okay. again, so I'll destroy that one, I and guess. Yeah, that one's down and out. Like, you just obliterate right. it into paste on the floor. Technically, they uh, get a save to see if they go down, but... Um, he didn't get a chance. Right. They would have to rule basically in at 20. Right. And okay, he I only get one attack, so... But that's... That guy down. So now you only get one attack on you. Right. And then... The Mute, Raph, both get one on. And then Yura gets two, but at advantage. Right. They're rolling armor save, Yotnar. Oh, that's right. Armor save. And then the mute Raf can also roll their armor saves, and then Bjork has two armor saves at a damage. Uh, 15. I forgot what I'm adding to this dexterity. Oh, wait, constitution. Dex plus con. So you add five. five. Oh, okay. Alright, I've got uh, 11 total. Okay, so he actually hit you that time. Okay. I rolled a 5 plus 2 plus 1, so 5 plus 3. I rolled an 8 for my armor save. So Jotnar takes 2 damage. Okay. And... The Mute takes 2 damage. And... Yorick? 15 hit? Nope, they missed a, you. I rolled a 21 for the first attack, and, then a, four, and then a 14 for the second attack. Miss! The Bjork definitely dodges both attempts to hit him. The Mute and Yopnar take some damage. And Hraf moves aside and is missed. He's uh, the quickest of the group, the most mobile in that sense. So, that means it's now back to your turn. Mute. Mute, Hraf and Bjork. Wicked saw mute. Mute yeah, is I, muted. I, I, mute was muted. Um, I was. I'm gonna try again for another um, for another attack. Here we go. That was not the roll. That was me clicking on it. So let's see what I get here. All right, so I rolled a nine, and then I add my strength, which is three, plus axe, which is two, right? So you plus your, your strength, proficiency, which is, which is two. Three. You plus. roll your strength, which is plus three. Your proficiency is plus two, so that makes it plus five. And you get a plus one for your axe, so it's actually plus six. So 15. Yes, that hits. Now you roll damage. D6 plus three. 
Nice. Eight. Eight damage to that one. Nice. Nice work. Right. Raf? Raf gets a better idea how to hit, and he hits uh, 18. That hits. Advantage. And he does a maximum damage of 8. Nice. <laughs> yeah, my maximum damage with my melee weapon is 8. And Jotnar is like, what, 1,000? 1,000. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And then Bjork, back to you again. I take the dodge action. I'm totally surprised. And then hopefully, if they get bored of my friends and approach me, I'll get a tax of opportunity on them. Jotnar. Swing again. Okay. This is the new yeah. one that is not taking any damage. This is the one that's standing up, right? Yes. Uh oh. I rolled a two. Add it up, it's not an instant fail because it's not a one. It's not an instant fail, right. So I've got uh, two, eight, ten. I don't add constitution to that, do I? No. Wait, no, you... it's. Oh, wait, I'm just still in this rage crap, ain't I? Right. But the rage doesn't help you hit, it helps you do damage. Oh, okay. So it's six for your strength, plus two for your proficiency, plus one for your feet. That means you get a plus nine when you attack. Okay, so eleven. That hits. Fantastic. Now you add plus eight to what you just rolled. 17. Bam! You hear a nice crunching noise. This thing has taken a good walloping and is hanging on, but not by much. Let's see if he has enough strength left in him to take a bite out of me. He's going to try to bite you, so we're going to do those defense rolls once more. Alright, one defense roll. Two. You plus a, whatever. You rolled a two? two? Yeah. Plus five. Right. So that would be a hit. So you take three damage. It's a total of five now. Yep. Okay. Craft? <laughs> Mute. Well, is, that is that Giggles? Yeah, yep. it's Giggles. <laughs> Hi, Giggles. Yeah. Uh, She's uh, I was going to say, I oh, got... well, we can leave. It sounds like the people in the tomb are quite happy with their <laughs> current situation. <laughs> <laughs> right. I had a 19 plus 1. I, was 20. Uh, I had a nice. 10, so I'm pretty sure I got hit. Yes, you got hit. Mute resisted. <laughs> And you get two damage, yeah, Raph. Perfect. perfect. So they hit each other. Sorry, what, how much damage? Two. Okay, that's I'm fine with two. And Bjork? 17 and then a 12. Okay, the 12 you get hit. You take six damage. So I'm confidently deflecting all their blows, like, yes, this is what I've trained for. And then I get over cocky, and the creature grabs my arm, ravages it, and now I'm, like, in danger. Right. Rough position, yeah. So, not feeling so good there. So, that means back to your guys' turn. Mute. You're up, then Hraf, and then Yorick. Oh, there's a bird that can, or unless he's just helping him out. Yeah, he's just helping me out. Oh, okay. That's what he's been okay. doing. Um. Yeah, let me uh, let me get my roll ready. Roll. If you hit. Oh wait, this just goes back. To... I rolled another one, so no, I I did not hit. Ouch. Oh my goodness. All okay, right. I, 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 
wall with my axe or something. You keep studying that tapestry and you're distracted. He Could said be. it was too big a tree to put in my pocket, so I'm breaking it down into little chunks. Right. <laughs> Raph? I'm 18 to hit. That hits. And seven points of damage. Okay. How bad does it look? <laughs> we'll see. It falls over, but pulls itself back up. Well, that's not good. Alright. I think it's my turn. Is it my turn? It's oh, wait. Uh, no, it's, uh... It's... The, it's, it's yeah. York. Uh, York. York. Um, York. 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 Let's see. I take the disengage action. Okay. Oh, sure, so they come running after me. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. I had to meet Shield. He just wanted to yank the teeth out of the guy that bit him. You don't know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 14, 20. Six. You hit. So yeah. damage. Oh wow. Three oh, plus three plus what? Uh yeah, three plus eight. Plus, three plus eight. Yeah, eight. So eleven. Yeah, so eleven. So they could make this. The Let's see if they do. Uh, I doubt it. It's already been crushed once. Nope. He didn't make it. Well they could actually make a save to not actually die. Oh right. So he's dead. You still have your move. Oh. <laughs> well then, I don't have anything in front of me, so I have to turn around and go toward these two guys. You want to go all the way over? It's up to you. You have 35 feet of movement. Um. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm moving. I'm taking the distance. You're going the distance? Yeah, I'm going the distance. It, you can actually, intimidation. you can actually go all the way in, or you can actually hit them from here. How do you change the height? Of the I, lift? I don't lift height. In the top, there's a little guy with a weight thing over his head, and it says lift height. Um, I don't think we have. I I can't hit him, can I? I, I don't get another attack, do I? No, you can hit them from here if you want. Is what I'm saying. So do you want to be here? Or do you want to move in to where they can hit uh, you? No, I don't. I can be close enough for me to hit. I don't need to be close enough for them okay. to hit. So they're going to shamble forward on their turn. Because you're the closest target. Okay. And they're going to try to take a bite of you. Alright. Now you I get to roll two. two saves. Tastes like chicken. And again, you had five. First one is 14. You're good. And five is 12. That doesn't quite make it. So one gets through, doing five points of damage. Holy shit, that was a hard fight. But you take half, so you only take two. Oh. I need to divide all the damage that they've given me so mm -hmm. far. So... That was five before, and then five now. So I've only so taken you've, five. You've only taken four, because well, it's rounded down. Yeah, so you took two and two. Okay. Okay, so total is four now. Okay. That brings a dope. Now that you're remembering it, yeah. Wrath and Mute, you both can roll a save as well to see if they connect with your armor. 17. Oh, I'm sorry, 15. You are able to de deflect their attack. Raph? 17. 17. You're able to I'm deflect sure. it as well. I'm that means it's now a mute's turn. Then Raf, and then Bjork. Come on, mute. Time for you to hit. 
Yeah, yeah right? Let's see if I can't do a, a, a shite one roll. And we got a seven hey. plus, what is that? Three plus two plus one, so mm -hmm. seven yep. plus six, so 23. That yeah, hits. You, you hit it well smartly this time. It's a right proper hit. So three plus, what do I add with my plus three? The you, two packs? Yeah, you roll right. a d6 and you add three. Okay, so six. So you did six damage. That one's not looking so good. I think you calculated my damage from last roll. But see, notice how when I rotated this time and I'm actually facing him, I hit him. Hey, Craft. <laughs> 13 to... 13 hits. Avoid. Uh, oh, no, no, 13 to, right, to hit. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, it is 13 to hit. I counted right. I just forgot what I was doing. Okay, 13 um, hits. Oh, less damage. Uh, six. Okay. See if he stays up or not. He stays up. Don't you... You knock him down, and then he slowly gets down. up. Yeah, he should stay down. I I recommend it. <sighs> Yorick? I'm going to move up behind my good friend Kraft here and stab the <laughs> zombie with my spear. Okay. Oh, so I'm your meat shield. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've already established this. So, huh? Let's see. That is a 14. That hits. Oh, your damage. Um, hang on one sec. As a bonus action, I think I'm going to roll secondary attack if this doesn't kill it. Uh, that would be 10. I think that one would be dead anyway. He's been knocked down twice. He falls down and yeah. pulls himself back up. Bonus action, I'm going to strike him again. With a 18. That hits. And for damage, I did four. Let's see if he rolls low this time or not. He goes down. Keeps getting back up. The Timex. I think Yarl knows what's going on. He gets up again. You're never going to keep him down. Yarl and Raven no. probably both and know what's going on. I only moved the weevils wobble, but they <laughs> only moved five down. feet, so I'm going to move the other 25. Okay. One, two, three. All right, Jotnar. Okay. Right, you're mad, done. You're up. And I'm swinging. Okay. Swing away. Shit! I barely hit. If I did, right, what is it? To uh, I have. Remember, you rolled a two and you hit. Yeah, that's right. So I hit again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically, as long as you don't roll a one. As long as I don't roll a one, I hit. So mm -hmm. I, I did hit this time, so it's yep. damage it time. Is it seven? Six and one is seven plus eight. Right? Or five? Plus I forgot eight. the damage. Plus eight damage. Okay, so 15 points of damage. Whew. All right, let's see. Does he, he going to make a save? Yep. I don't think he's going to make it because he has to roll, you know, an at 20 to make it, and he doesn't. Because you do so much stinking damage. <laughs> oh, so it's based on the damage. What? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why mine kept getting up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't you... Bjork, you took it down with the... Uh, with the four. The, yeah. I hit him with the blunt end of my. You my did less spear. damage. You do. You did less damage than I have done every time, and you took it down. 
You can crit I, fail. The first, the first one I did 10, and it still stood up. Yeah, but 20 actually did less damage than me. Which is okay. Alright, so the mute and Jotnar need to roll a armor save. Okay, armor save. Nope. You made it. Well done. Alright, yeah, mine. I made mine too, I think. Cool, yep. 15 plus my bonus. So the mute is up. Which is 5. Yeah. Attack mute, attack! Attack! Oh god, I rolled a 3 plus 6, I got a 9. That hits. Huzzah! Okay, let's get... <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> Do some damage this time. Nice. How much? Eight. 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 That will make him make a save. Ooh. Good Goes job. down. Jutnar. You're against the last one, but Haraf, you're up. And then Bjork. My turn? Yep. I'm gonna walk here. <laughs> Uh, dodge. Oops. <laughs> dodge the raven. The raven dodges. Uh, the raven helps, and Wrath dodges. Okay. Interesting. Yorick? Um... <laughs> Runs and trips. Yeah. Boosh, bounces and off my ass. First battle we had. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, use that help action for advantage. Just want so, all the glory of taking out the most of them. Well, you've only taken out one. 20, but... 24. That hits. And that would be. A in nine. That's what I'm looking for. Nine. Nine. You did no. nine damage. You did no damage. Good job. Nine. Nine, nine, nine. Uh, is he still up? Yep. That's the first damage action. he's taken. Oh, for my bonus action then. That hits. Uh, yep, 25. And that would be a total of six damage. Excellent. All right, Jotnar. Sorry, he took your advantage away. I was trying to give it to you. Uh, uh, Eighteen you points of damage. Uh, actually, he doesn't need it. Never mind. Nice. Eighteen, 18 points of damage. Nice. Let's see if they roll That's an at right. twenty. That's why I said he doesn't need the uh, advantage. Nope. Of the advantage. Oh He's my dead. god. That was so close. <laughs> you saw that? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's down. Jotnar just swings his tree stump and, well, branch, and this thing just splats and smears on the ceiling, and there's, like, this black acre that just starts dripping down. <laughs> Alright, well we've played uh, the next three rooms. <laughs> since I was since I was dodging, I jump out of the way so I don't get splashed. And meanwhile your bird gets caked with blood. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's actually on my shoulder and it just ran away. <laughs> uh, can I get instead of a marble, can I get one of those uh discs? Yeah. No, they don't shrink small enough. Oh, um, okay. we'll, we'll get that worked out for next time. I actually need to call it here because of uh, yeah. family things. But, well, man, ooh. this has been a blast. Thank you all so much for joining us on this. I hope you all have thoroughly enjoyed this. We will pick up here next week with more fun. Do next not worry. Week, or weeks. not next week. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay, cool. Two weeks so. in. Oh, yeah. hmm? Just... We, we got three empty when we come back. We got a what? 
loot when we come back. We didn't loot no dead bodies before they disappeared. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if these things are able to be looted, but yeah. <laughs> you do not know. That is the fun of it, is it not? All right. Yeah, All good. right. Thank you. Quick, quick question before I forget. Was I able to recover that one-shot arrow? Roll a d10. Oh, I didn't even know you shot an arrow. Once before. Uh, that was the first combat. There you, go. you can use your L's d10 right here. Hey. I got a 10. Okay. You don't get it. It broke. Oh. And any other number, you get it. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> the one in 10 chest. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, I'm nice with it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I wanted to roll a one. I, I have a habit of rolling one, and I couldn't use fortunate, which is to re-roll once. Well, there you go. Oh, all right, well. gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you all for viewing. I do hope you've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a blast. Been a lot of fun. Yes. Yep. I had fun. Good. Was that a little better for you, Viking, having a little bit of uh, combat? A little bit of blood on your blade. Just to very, very, very little. One. Very <laughs> little blood. Oh, he left already. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got very little blood on I'm going to go ahead and get you guys over to Goodbye, Table Nights, so. and then I'll finish wrapping up with these gents. Thank you all for being here. Until next time, as always, enjoy the story. We'll see you all then. Raid Inbound. He needs a good raid every once in a while. I'd raid Wicked, but I think he's going to yeah, call him. Good night, everybody. Good night.